Welcome once again to another edition of Superhero Stuff You Should Know. Going over more concept art is once again the man who knows too much about Batman, the Bat. Ben Juan with me are my co-hosts, starting with Andruvius <laughs> Batmanicus. Batmanicus. So, you know how they say in Cobra Kai, it's karate time. I want <laughs> It's Batman time. Everybody, so yeah, it's Andrew, and we got the artist here. Man, when, it, when is it not Batman time around here, Ben? <laughs> that's true. I mean, that's true. If we're being honest, but uh, I, I have to say I am especially excited for this episode because we are going to be talking about the artwork involved with the animated series, and uh, mm-hmm. I, I am very familiar with quite a bit of this. I, I remember just pouring over the um, the book by uh, Chip Kid, where he kind mm-hmm. of put all, a lot of that stuff together and wait his name was chip kid yeah that's right andrew kid is that an alias two, <laughs> two d's <laughs> you've learned that's, something new today already <laughs> that's funny man i'm already learning everybody <laughs> <laughs> so yes we're continuing oh, the concept man. art train for a little bit more actually for a long time uh we just covered batman 89 we did Batman Returns in December for the holidays. We will do the Schumacher films, but we need enough time to do, you know, to basically give them justice because I realized just how much, you know, you thought there was a lot on 89. Jesus, Batman Forever. I'm like, yeah, we, we need some time on this. So <laughs> we'll go chronologically after 89 and Returns, but before the Schumacher films was Batman the Animated Series, widely regarded as, of course, the greatest adaptation of the mythos, the Batman of our generation, at least of the generation of the co-hosts here. But a lot of the characters we've come to know and love from that show could have looked a lot different. And so I thought I'd run us through what that could have been. Now, wow. a lot of the concept art comes from the book Batman Animated that Zach was referring to earlier from Chip Kidd and Paul Dini, which actually seems to be out of print. I don't know if you know this, guys, but I looked oh, this up yeah. on Amazon. It's selling for 175 bucks. I could make Amazon. some quick cash right now. <laughs> I have two copies. Oh, son of a bitch. I only have one. Damn. So, <laughs> just like you're torn between like, do I part with this or do I just keep it? Because it's like, you know, I, same remember, thing with I remember finding it at the bookstore as a kid and just like being amazed. Yeah. And uh, just pouring over it. Um, and later on, I know my dad, like he's an electrician. He worked at this guy's house and he must have told him that I like Batman. He's like, oh, he'd probably like this book. And he just gave my dad <laughs> another copy of this book. And I was just like, Damn. oh, that's kind of crazy. But it is weird to think that it's out of print mm-hmm. now. Yeah. Andrew and I were also talking about Batman War on Crime with Alex Ross. And mm-hmm. I looked it up, and it's also $700 Dear on God. Amazon. So, New, though, right? I looked that up again, and I was like, I wanted to see. And I only saw it for like going for like a, maybe 100 or less. Got to get Still, on the eBay. That's way, that's way more than what we paid for it originally. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I think I had the Wonder Woman too. I have Wonder Woman and the Superman one, but I never got the other one. But I wanted the Batman one. I had the those Justice are cool. League They're one. like huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll um, I'll have to take a look and see. But I'm pretty sure I, on- I only have the Batman one. No surprise, of course. But <laughs> I'll I'll just let you read it, Andrew, off of me. You don't have to I, buy it for. I've $700. read it digitally. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I feel like it's not the same though, because uh, like, yeah, you yeah. want the big feel of You're gonna have to it's, read it's it with little white gloves on. <laughs> I know. In a hermetically <laughs> sealed box. Yeah, Ben, I'm not sure if I wanna read uh, your version because I'll I'll taint it. You you need to save that seven hundred for a rainy day. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Well the the cover I'm showing here for the visuals are illustrations of Batman from Bruce Tim, the classic look of Bruce Tim's Batman. That's on the cover of Batman Animated. And if you guys don't have the book and don't have $700 or $175 (laughs) even just for that book, that's okay because we're going over a lot of the stuff that's in there and stuff that's not in there in this episode. So you get to watch that all for free. So uh, Mm. anyway, Bruce Timm's Batman didn't always look this way. So inside the book, we get a bit of a glimpse of some concept art that Bruce Timm, it says it was done years before the animated series. We're looking specifically on the ones on the left in black and white. Uh, here we can see that the ears are a little different. They're sort of slanted back. The eyes um, sometimes seem narrower, but he is pissed off, so maybe that's just what it is. Uh, <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, that's but the true. full body one is interesting because you can see that he seems buffer, yeah. and also the bat on the oval was very different, very thin in comparison to what we got. That was a lot more traditional in the animated series. It looks like um, do their own design. It looks like Tiny Toons Batman. Like sometimes he would <laughs> kind of, yeah. sometimes he would appear on there like they would show him like 
I'm thinking specifically of like the little plucky duck ones where he's bad duck. Uh, sometimes it would show <laughs> I Michael forgot Keaton. He was in that show. Yeah, sometimes it would show Michael Keaton like as Batman, oh, yeah. and he would like be super buff and oh, rubber yeah. looking. And this kind of reminds yeah. me of it. I will never forget Tiny Two's interpretation of Jay Leno, and that's him carrying his chin with a with a cart. <laughs> <laughs> his chin is humongous. Jesus, a caricature, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just look, well, look at the chin on this Batman. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's like jutting out here, which funny enough, there's a later thing I'll show you where they say, like, please don't have the chin jut out like this. <laughs> so, oh, really? yeah. Interesting. <laughs> they didn't want him to have the Jay Leno. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, for sure. On the right, for those wondering why we're not talking about this one as much, this is actually concept art for the Batman flashback suit as shown in Robin's Reckoning. Mm-hmm. That's said to be, it says here, it's reflecting the influences of Batman creator Bob Kane and <clears throat> Bill Finger. Uh, and illustrators David Mazzuccelli and Alex Toth. Uh, so Batman here is the one that we saw in the cartoon. It's just only in certain episodes when they were flashing back where he doesn't have the yellow oval. He has the plain black bat on the gray. And the cowl looks a little different. Uh, the horns or the ears are a little bit more curved in like devil horns, kind of similar to the 1939 Golden Age Batman. So that's kind of what they were going for on that. So that's cool. The Did Bruce Tim see- designs mm-hmm. always look like they skip leg day. <laughs> you know, which is I know that's his style, but it was just mm-hmm. <laughs> well, his well, the, like the one on the right's a little better, I guess. But his female characters have like all have this kind of pixie um, mm. frame uh. to them, and I know it because like I have an action figure of his Poison Ivy and his Catwoman, and they can never stand up. They're like <laughs> got tiny, teeny little toothpick <laughs> legs and feet, and they just cannot stand up. It always bothers me, <laughs> but. That's just like his personal aesthetic. True. That's funny, man. Yeah, true. Uh, we're going to look at some more sketches. So just some general sketches of Batman, not quite filled in, but I think they were just playing around with it uh, on here and just different movements and stuff, especially for like animation. That's that's pretty important, obviously. Uh, but we have some other character designs here. Uh, we're going to see a lot of this from Kevin Nowland. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is Batman as designed by Kevin Nowlin, and it's kind of an alternative version. And this Batman kind of looks like Space Ghost. He does. <laughs> yeah, kind of. This is kind of um, <laughs> not what a lot of fans want, it's like especially on the left poor, here. Poor posture <laughs> and a teardrop <laughs> shaped cape. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. Teardrop the, cape. I was going to bring that up. The cape is literally an upside down triangle pointed down between his legs, and yeah. that's it. Yeah, so, it looks. It does look like a. Yeah, you're right. Like an adult space swim ghost. version. Yeah, <laughs> space ghost version. <laughs> looks like he's. Um, yeah, it's like a Kmart version of Batman. He's gonna have some like old school voice. We're just like, "Hello, I'm Batman." Yeah, <laughs> he's talking. So the one. I mean, other than the cape on the right, it's like it's better. At least, at least better, not yeah. hunched o- hunched over. Bruce just has bad posture. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. On so. the left here. Uh, we have a Bruce Wayne as well from Kevin Nolan, who, first off, we have, we, in contrast to Bruce Tim, where everyone skipped leg day, look at this guy's pants. That's true. On this. Good <laughs> These Lord. Oversized, yes. Uh, and there's no way that his legs are really that wide. But the eyes also look very creepy on this That's Bruce true. Wayne. Well, suits uh, are like a little this, sinister. This like the, their, art, <laughs> yeah. their art deco look, like a lot of the suits were kind of baggy like this, right? Probably. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I, I think that it's probably like that in the like in the actual show. Yeah, I just hadn't really looked and noticed, but I'm pretty sure when we look back, it'll probably look like that, given the time and the time period that they're sort of trying to evoke with the the 40s and the film noir type stuff. Yeah, a lot of the characters look a lot um, slimmer and kind of mm-hmm. like just more refined, I guess. By the time they started doing new adventures, uh, mm-hmm. I remember that that in the book, them showing like the new character designs, and yeah, if you really look at like. I guess especially I'm thinking of like Harvey Dent as Two Face and stuff, and Commissioner Gordon. Their pants are just so baggy; they're like just chunky, oh, yeah. like running around everywhere. <laughs> it was the '90s too, so that's what mm-hmm. everybody was wearing in real Gordon life. Gordon basically went on Jenny Craig or something because he yes. went from like this <clears throat> rectangle to just being Husky. like this thin, yeah, this like really thin guy. I'm like, what happened to him? So. <laughs> What happened to uh, you, Harv? We'll go into Gordon and, and Harvey Dent later on, on those. I have visuals of, of those. But uh, we have a few more here. This is a, the final design of Bruce Wayne. Oh, with the oversized pants. Yep. Still. <laughs> uh, and, you know, this is the, the friendly looking, the original Bruce Wayne from the animated series in the brown and yellow suit that would look 
god awful, I think, in real life, but it seems to work in the aesthetic of the animated series. <laughs> Mm-hmm, the painted mm-hmm, version mm-hmm. of Batman. That's a little closer to what we got in the show. It's not quite the same image of him narrowing his eyes in the in the title sequence, but it seems to be something similar to that with this one. And then pretty much the final look that we're looking at here, the different movements, the classic Batman animated series look iconic, really. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Another look at the Bruce Tim style of this with this. I like this like painted versions of his yeah. different characters. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this really one's awesome. cool. So uh, I have a few more Batman stuff. One is the title sequence uh, in the sense that the original version of the title sequence was actually sort of a test pilot or sort of a just a general test screen type of thing. And in the opening, it was a little different when the criminals shot at Batman. He did a lot of fast move dodging, as we can see here. <laughs> so <laughs> we're looking at uh, a ton of different movements of Batman here where he's just moving all over the place. You don't see his face or the bottom half. Uh, it's just his white eyes peering through just black on here. But it is kind of funny to look at because that's just not what it looks like in the final, in the actual show. Mm. But for this test part, they're like, yeah, let's try it out. And I think maybe they realized it looked a little goofy. So For the aural only it people, mm-hmm. uh, it is like what like 15 cells of a Bruce Tim Batman uh like really contorting his body to hell and back <laughs> to <Yeah. laughs> uh dodge these bullets and it, yeah it's a little it would have been awkward and compared yeah. to what we'd eventually get but yeah. you know they were figuring it out they had to figure mm-hmm. it out yeah. so mm-hmm. it's a yeah. long process so this screen test type of thing had Batman stopping a bunch of robbers on the roof before the police show up to apprehend them, which obviously evolved into the title sequence. So mm-hmm. we have some art of the title sequence, this beautiful painting of the art deco of Gotham, of the rooftop, rooftop where the criminals are about to confront Batman. And then, of course, the concept art that Zach put in the thumbnail with Batman at the top of the roof, the cape flapping behind him at the end of the sequence, classic shot with the lightning. Well, not in this shot, but in the actual title sequence. Mm-hmm. So yeah, iconic stuff. Uh, next, we're going to take a look at something called theories, which I believe are different ways that they want to show uh, different body part movements in animation, taking mm-hmm. one body part at a time. And so uh, specifically this one, we're looking at head, the, you know, the head of Batman. What's notable here on some of the notes is that whenever Batman was turning to the side in his profile, they wanted both ears to be visible. It shouldn't just be like one ear sticking mm-hmm. out, no matter how, you know, what angle it was. Uh, it also says here uh, in like the middle, it says not to scoop out the chin. So uh, that is pretty funny. Actually, when you kind of see this Jay Leno chin right, <laughs> there, right next to it. <laughs> oh, um, but my favorite part of looking at these is on the bottom where it has a no sign in, front, yep. on, in the back of it where it says, don't put his mouth down too low. Look kind of dorky. <laughs> it, <laughs> it does look it does look off. Definitely. <laughs> Yeah, they're they're right about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's almost like so, a character model sheet, but it's just like a, I guess, like you said, just theorizing what he's going to look like in animation. I guess what mm-hmm. will look correct. Yeah. So we've <laughs> that's kind of dorky. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's awesome. They're not wrong. Yeah. So, uh, next are the movements of his arms, and for specifics, they call the fins on the side of his forearms the gauntlets. They call them the scallops, and they wanted the hmm. scallops to flare out. But it also says here in a note where, like, if you can't get it a certain angle, just lose them. <laughs> just forget yeah. about them. Nobody's going to notice. <laughs> Especially so, if it's funny. an action sequence. Like, yeah. yeah. If it's a split second, it's like nobody's really Who cares? Notice. Yeah. Uh, we have cape theories. So, obviously, the cape mm-hmm. itself had to be something that you have to make move all the time. Um, they wanted to wrap Batman in his cape whenever possible because it looks so cool, (laughs) is what it says. Because it looks so cool, Mm -hmm. literally, is what it says here. Uh, (laughs) They wanted the cape to be shorter when he was power walking, but also said that they could cheat the cape and make it look longer whenever he's just, like, standing there, Uh, like in this part right here. So They've uh, still never done this, like, front wrap in live action, right? Not really. The closest is when I think Christian Bale is, like, waiting for Rachel to wake up in the Batcave and Batman Begins. And that's about that's it. That's about it. That's all I can really think of. Maybe after Keaton brings down the cape after he first shows up in the, on the rooftop in 89. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah, it's it's not... We haven't seen him move with the cape down like this, like we do in the animated series. Right, right, so right. So we'll have to see it at some point in our lifetimes. 
or we'll just have to make it happen. I don't know, but that's what we got here. Uh, yeah. Another thing is for the cape. Um, yeah, they wanted it longer than necessary, and I think a lot of this, it's cool because it's things that make sense when you take on the animator's viewpoint, but you don't think about it when you're watching it. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's really interesting to take a look at these. Uh, I do know in the when films, they, uh, Ben, I know they... I don't know if it's for every single Batman film, but I remember in the special features for uh, like some of the Burton ones or Schumacher ones, they talked about how they mm-hmm. did cheat quite a bit. And sometimes he would be wearing a longer cape than others because like it, yeah. it looks cooler the longer it is when it's out. And then whenever it's like down, it would be dragging on the ground if it was realistically the same yeah. cape. Or it would just get in the way of the fight sequences, which probably yeah. happens a lot too. So uh, yeah, it makes sense. For what we're looking at here are sort of what they call black overlap theories. So in the final season, as we talked about with with Zach, you know, the show went from Fox to Kids WB and every character got redesigned. Some got really slimmed down. In Batman's case, he went from blue and gray to black and gray. And these are where the black overlap theories were done. Uh, One thing here that I like is in terms of details is when they said that when Batman's cape goes above his head now, you can't have black on black because... It's just going to blend in. You're just going to see yeah. his eyes through like the cape coming up. It's going to look really awkward. So you have to put a <laughs> highlight on the cape above the ears so that you highlight just his head and the mm-hmm. rest of the cape sort of comes in. So that makes a lot of sense. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It also says he can walk out of an all black area or walk past one. Just don't hold him against one since, again, he would blend in for a long time. Mm-hmm. Right? So it's got uh, Batman saying bad. At the bottom. Yeah, bad. <laughs> <laughs> this is bad. So, <laughs> Good, bad. <laughs> uh, and then here are the final designs of the redesigned season when it moved to Kids WB for Batman and Bruce Wayne. I don't mind the redesigned Batman. I feel a little mixed, however, on the new Bruce Wayne. Bruce, I felt, had a better fashion sense in this version. He wasn't wearing the brown and yellow ugly <laughs> suit. He was in a more traditional business suit, but he also looked almost like way too obviously Batman to me. Maybe just a little <laughs> too dark already. I'm like, eh, I don't know. I prefer, like, Bruce Wayne had a very friendly face in the classic animated series. His posture, um, too, with Bruce seasons. was different in the original design. Yeah, he seemed more relaxed. This is yeah. very much like, this is Batman out of the costume. That's what it just feels like to me. So That's interesting. I feel mixed. I feel mixed on the the new Bruce Wayne that they designed afterwards. So after this is a storyboard of Batman gliding in the Cat in the Claw episode using the glider made famous by Batman Year One as drawn by David Mazzuchelli. I brought up to Andrew that I would talk about the glider a little bit in the animated series uh, when we talked about the Patreon of Batman Year One. But this storyboard comes from Kurt Gaeta for the episode The Cat in the Claw Part Two where he comes down to swoop down on the, the train that Red Claw is on. Uh, Kurt Gaeta would become the director of Batman Beyond Return of the Joker years later after oh, this. Oh, yeah, so that's cool. That's cool. Uh, along the same lines of the glider is the jet wing, which is a concept that is in the last season or so of the Kids WB seasons, mm-hmm. uh, basically, that he's sort of flying around on. Uh, the doors of the, the jet wing slide open to reveal missiles, it says, and he can uh, remote control it with the gauntlets on his uh, forearm. So that's kind of cool. This sort of feels like it's they're leading into Batman Beyond already with this kind of yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. This is like an early prototype type of thing. And yeah. an action figure. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, well, that's more important, you know. Toyetic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and then we have some early storyboards of what looks like it could be an early title sequence. The most interesting one to me is the center one where it looks like the silhouette of Batman looking over the city. Isn't fucking the Cape Crusader one coming out? It, like, it's using that it kind a, of art, it I think. A, yeah, it has mm-hmm. that type of thing. Yeah. It has that type of thing. Maybe they took it from here. Bruce Timm's like, I finally get to use it. That Joker <laughs> all these yeah. years. That Joker yeah. almost looks like um, the title cards for, like, the various episodes that I think mm-hmm. I think Eric Radomski oh, yeah. that yeah. painted the um, backgrounds for the show. I think he painted mm-hmm. each one of those title cards. Mm. It kind of reminds me of one of those. It does look like that, yeah. Yeah, it's got that style. Uh, this image of Batman looking over the city did carry over into other mm-hmm. concept art for the promos, it looks like. So we got a whole bunch of them, mainly in the center here, uh, where they sort of made it look like him over the city, but the part where the silhouette meets the city is like the bottom of the bat insignia. So it was it's, mm-hmm. it, it sort of blends in and becomes the bat insignia the, inside the yellow oval, which is really this cool. This feels like it could be a birthday cake. <laughs> that too, based off yeah. of what it looks like yeah yeah what it looks like which is fine that actually yeah. be an awesome birthday cake to be that would be yeah. yeah 
Go back to the 90s, get this for your birthday. It'd be amazing. <laughs> back Best in <birthday> time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we have more promo shots. Batman in front of the moon. My favorite is this one in the bottom with him. Just oh, with like cool. his wings gliding out in front of the moon. So that's cool. But of yeah. course, in terms of promo, nothing really beats just the simplicity of him all in shadow with the cape draped over him in front of a red moon. So that was the final shadowy design of the promos for Batman. So that's most of the Batman stuff. Similar to what we did with Batman 89 concept art, I wanted to show a bit of, or really a lot, of Gotham City. So Mm. as discussed, we're looking at uh, Eric Radomski, as Zach's brought up, for uh, he's famous for doing the art of Gotham on black construction paper to get the look and feel of Gotham City. So this is literally paint on uh, black construction paper. And the others we have here are done with colored pencil. Uh, obviously, Gotham doesn't quite look like this exactly in the show, but he does capture the feel of what they're going for, I think, when you look at these, especially the ones on the right. These uh, are drawn kind of on see. black construction paper as well, mm-hmm. probably? Yeah, yeah. 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 That's cool. So it's got and this that is, feel. This is chalk on construction paper, or what's... Colored uh, pencils. Colored pencil, okay. According to the caption, I think. That's when cool. I, when I zoomed in during mm-hmm. the, the prep for this. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it all, also looks very chalk-like, though. You know, it yeah, looks, it's yeah. got that feel to it. But um, ultimately, it sort of led into the Gotham we saw on the show. Uh, the top image to me looks very Fleischer-esque mm. in terms of the, the look yeah. of Gotham. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can definitely see that influence. Uh, and on the bottom is early art of Crime Alley, which we'd see in Bruce's hallucination in the episode Dreams and Darkness. So, mm-hmm. you know, they ended up using that for the episode. Um, what's cool to me, I think, is that this is as much of an S tier Gotham city to me as the live action Anton first night oh, yeah. Phelps Gotham of Batman 89. And yet they're so different, you know, like Ben, Ben, well, I got to ask you a question, man. What's not S tier about this fucking show. I think everything, <laughs> well, yeah. basically everything is S tier. It's S tier kill a croc in this motherfucker. It's an S tier. I think the uh, Alfred, episode, Alfred shoelaces, the episode I've got Batman <laughs> in my basement is maybe the only thing that is falls under S tier. I would say the version, their version of Hugo Strange is not an S tier Hugo Strange. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I think yeah. Zach right. would agree with me on that. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. We should episode the, the worst things that are the still worst B of plus. Yeah. yeah, the worst of B <laughs> B Taz. But even still even B. the yes, even the worst of B Taz is still like an A. Yeah. Uh, there's yeah. Yeah. no yeah. way it could go any lower. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I think Gotham though, in some ways, is underrated for the for B Taz because of the fact that like it's it's not as referred to as the greatest Gotham as much as the 89 or the Burton verse type stuff. And I know it's, you know, it's different mediums, it's animation, but like this art deco Fleischer era film noir type is just, it's so perfect at the same time. It screams Gotham city just as much as like the Gothic gargoyle buildings built on top of each other. No zoning Mm -hmm. commission. Anton first 89 Gotham. So it's really interesting how like both versions can scream the same characteristic, even though they're completely different. Uh, Same thing with pretty much all these other versions of these characters over the last 80 so years so uh that's pretty cool to me uh we got a shot of the gotham bridge as drawn by gary montabano and uh, a color version of it right here on it which you know sort of evokes more of that the dark art deco type stuff mm-hmm. i'm gonna we test have... your uh, gotham knowledge what is it what does the gotham bridge connect like park row and somewhere else or <laughs> like or is it kind of change depending on uh well who i writes think it? I think it, here is just sort of a generic bridge, but okay. when they got further, when they developed Gotham more, it was just like, well, it's it's like New York City. It's like an island. So like have the bridges connect. And then that's sort of what made way for all the no man's land type stuff where they're just like, they blew up the bridges. Now nobody can get off and that type of stuff. Oh, so, right. Yeah, it's like Manhattan or something. Yeah. So this is probably yeah. a bridge that like goes from Gotham to outside of Gotham is what my guess would be. Oh, I could see it being like Bloodhaven to... Well, yeah. Gotham yeah. proper yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah that's cool. definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, this is cool. Uh, we have another look at Gotham City with the rooftop chase in the beginning of the episode, "The Cat and the Claw," Part One, with Batman chasing after Catwoman. And uh, we have—I don't know what to call this—the this sort of water tower-looking thing. Mm-hmm. But this feels very Betas, very Gotham-esque yeah. type of thing. So, it's one uh, where the Warner Brothers cool. live. Yeah, the Animaniacs. I was just thinking <laughs> that. <Yeah. laughs> He's going to pop out at any time. Oh, man. So 
Uh, <laughs> a shot of the street is next with the Gotham Gazette talking about suspicious fires, uh, a black and white Gotham cityscape. And then the next thing feels very Nigel Phelps ish or 89 ish, uh, but for BTAS. So in terms mm. of the fact that it's also done in sort of this black and white charcoal mm-hmm. sketch type thing. And this comes once again from the Andrew Farrago, Gina McIntyre, Batman 80 year history book, which you can buy at our store. So check <laughs> we that linked out. it now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll link it over here. So yeah, it's some, somewhere around here. Yeah. It's got, uh, it's got sepia tones too, right? This is yeah, really cool. I like this one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is yeah. really cool. Um, so yeah, we just, Dan just, through all sorts of different concept art I got off of them. I'm just like, I don't I don't know how much I could put in here, but I'm just gonna throw in as much as I can on it. So it, they, got, a lot of them have Cartoon Network at the bottom too, but this was on this is not Cartoon Network, right? This for, might for a have, while. Yeah, that Cartoon Network part might be from like some sort of article from Cartoon Network that showed oh. this stuff. I don't think I think they that was did at show the it at one added point. It. Yeah. It was mm-hmm. like I remember I it was before the seasons came out on DVD. And I think I was either like in ninth grade or starting to get into high school, but Cartoon Network, it would play at like one o'clock at night on Saturdays. I just remember mm-hmm. thinking like I, I stayed up specifically to watch it. Like you had no idea what episode it was going to be, but mm-hmm. I remember that was like That's my cool. only access to the show for a little while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think this is a watermark that was added on. Okay. From some behind the scenes mm-hmm. thing or... Whatever, but uh, yeah, yeah. Obviously, it was done for Fox in the beginning in these days, especially with these episodes, because I think this is the skyscraper under construction from the opening of Robin's Reckoning Part One. Okay. So mm-hmm. uh, there's that. We've got these other sort of painted versions of Gotham City, uh, very concept art feely. We got the WB logo on the bottom here. Mm-hmm. Uh, channel KGOT, uh, <laughs> which I don't think is in the show, but let us know if I'm wrong on that. I don't remember that. K, <laughs> the, K would also make, uh, t- well, in the real world, it would make Gotham a West Coast city. Because <laughs> it's W on we'll the keep East you Coast. Guessing. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, yeah. That's just been because in California they, the whole time. They made, they made, they drew this in Burbank probably or some shit. So, <laughs> yeah, they fucking, so yeah. it's all, it's all yeah. K. Yeah. Didn't think about that. But also yeah. just, it adds more to the mystery, I think, of Gotham. WNBC. WNBC. Yeah. We got another Gotham during Christmas time with a reference on the bottom. It says specifically Frank Capra. Capra, of course, is famous for doing It's a Wonderful Life, the classic oh, Jimmy Stewart yeah. Christmas movie, which Batman sees for the first time in the episode Christmas with the Joker. Uh, this one, one feels of the best very lines Batman of, Returns of the episode. Ish. That too, yeah. Yeah. With the snow uh, and all that. So mm-hmm. uh, next is Gotham Streets with a diner on the corner that looks very reminiscent of uh, Hopper's Nighthawks to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, on yeah. Put there. So in, in the Batman trailer too, do you think they're pulling or does every city diner looks like that? You I feel like I mean? they make every city diner look yeah. like that at this point. If, if it's a diner, it's on the corner and it's got a window. It's Nighthawks. That's yeah, because I was thinking that when I saw the Pat, the Pat Bat trailer with, yeah, the, with the, yeah. the Riddler intro or whatever. So. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Totally. Especially because yeah. there's like even in the original painting, there's greens in it, you know. Exactly. Yeah, you so see. It's got that feel. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll yeah, see. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. It's got that feel to it. Uh and then we have some more stuff. We got the docks over here. We have all sorts of stuff. We got an elevated train track with a red sky, which I think looks cool. You know, yeah, like it, that's cool. If this were live action, it would have a very Dick Tracy feel to it. Definitely. Yeah. The nineties Dick Tracy movie. Gotham streets from above with these painted, uh, you know, cop cars down here. Um, and then Gotham city. What was he and... saying? Dark city. I found a way out. The L, <laughs> the L train or something. He jumps in front of the train or something. Oh yeah. 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 Something like that. Yeah. So this is, this is, we're starting to get into art that's actually shown. So this is Gotham from the opening of mask of the phantasm and just, you know, Gotham city from other angles that we see sometimes in art and sometimes throughout the show and stuff. But, uh, this is pretty cool. I think just get to look of the more of the art deco type stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and now for some specific locations, we got a laboratory here in black and white. Uh, we got Mr. Freeze's ice cave. There's mm. Nora with the sun beaming down on her. Uh, That's cool. And, and then the altar room from the Cult of the Cat episode. Uh, it's not really the most famous episode, but 
Dan <laughs> ended up finding a bunch of stuff. So I'm just like, all right, I guess so. Yeah. A plus uh, episode. It's on the yeah. lo- it's on the lower end of uh, the show. <laughs> So, uh, so more of yeah. the ultra rooms with uh, you know a giant you know giant cat heads. And this stuff is like an that, S plus so. here right here. <laughs> and d- demon heads. I'm I'm into. <laughs> yes, demon heads and cats. <laughs> demon cats. Yes. And if you have an ultra room, then you can also get the whisker box for the crazy cat <laughs> lady. <laughs> Brought to you by whisker box. <laughs> Check out have the link we- at superheroesstuffpod.com slash shop. <laughs> Is your ass stinky? Well, we have the Whisper Days as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I forgot to add a Gotham Segway. City bathroom. <laughs> yeah, Gotham, ba- yeah, the bathrooms. God damn it. I do I do have a, a penthouse, though. And this penthouse and probably had a bathroom in it. And you know so, what? Yeah. Yeah. If you want to live like Bruce Wayne <laughs> in B-Taz or any other character in B-Taz. That place that already a has the bidet. You, you know bidet. it. Yeah. If you want your if you want your ass as shiny as Bruce Wayne's, <laughs> get yourself a whisper bidet, y'all. That's the original bat signal. <laughs> <laughs> Pulls down his pants and it reflects off of it. Dun, 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 dun. That's yeah. that's the move. That's the S plus, man. <laughs> yeah. That's S plus move right there. Uh <laughs> superhero stuff pod.com slash shop those for days. those fucking <laughs> mirrors outside of the Gotham, <laughs> of the mansion turn <laughs> and he's do he's mooning him <laughs> so the light goes right into his asshole like one way to fight crime <laughs> <laughs> they're calling me <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man. All right, well, some more masters of fantastic <laughs> stuff oh yeah <laughs> The Shady Lady Casino, where Chucky's soul resides and is about to get killed. Oh, uh, uh, shit. And then that's, that's cool. Concept, yeah, the concept art of the World of Tomorrow, the World's Fair exhibit from Mask of the Phantasm. Uh, mm-hmm, and the inside mm-hmm, of mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. is done by Ray McCarson and painted by Steve Butts, which is his real name. Uh, All right, Andrew. Is the Arkham Asylum Cell. I'm skipping uh, that one, Zach. <laughs> it's uh, too easy. Arkham Cell with, with the red window. <laughs> the red sky continues on that, so that's pretty cool. This is uh, a place of healing. <laughs> <laughs> a serious house on serious earth. There you go. And, uh, I feel like Pattinson just goes in there and is like, I come here to think about Twilight. <laughs> 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 My past transgressions. I was just joking when I said I didn't work out. Yeah, Jesus. yeah. I totally did a lot of chin-ups and drugs. Uh, the, snack, the snack deck bar... <laughs> concept art of the outside of the stack deck bar which is the bar where almost got him takes place mm-hmm. uh as well as the location of other episodes the penthouse of maxi zeus which of course where he makes it look like you know mount olympus and stuff mm-hmm. a foreign city i think from the Roswell ghoul episodes uh an office and of course the iceberg lounge which shows up Man. in the final season i yeah. love that uh offices like carpet and the painting on the wall yeah yeah that to me mm. is like super old school deco-y. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I'd love to see this type of style in live action. Yeah. You know, modern film noir. Bring that back since, because we haven't really had that since Burton, you know? Mm-mm. That's uh, true. I yeah. Couldn't, f- I couldn't find any different designs for Alfred. It seems like they stuck with one design and he always looked like that. So yeah. I do have concept art of him fancily pouring tea into a cup. Though, so. Showing off. Knocked it out of the Alfred park. Alfred skills. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> They're just like, yeah, right just away. stick with this. Yeah. Uh, and of course, the final design of it, which is pretty much what we saw. Uh, Does he ever onto... have Vichy Swa in the animated show? <laughs> no, I think it's only in Batman Returns. I don't think that's Man, in anything. That else. is just Batman can at this point. <laughs> he needs to have Vichy Swa like all the time. Every it's day. It's like his thing. I yeah. hope they serve that at Park Row. Yeah, we're in London because otherwise that's a missed opportunity. That's true, so, dude. Come on, man. Vicious let us know the out the yin yang yeah. over there. It was yeah, a seriously. missed opportunity in the Lego Batman. He was eating lobster that's thermidor tr- all the time. He should have been eating vicious. Oh swan. yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's, true. that's true. Oh well. Uh, next is Robin. This is an early version of Robin. His hair is very different, and he looks. He actually looks younger uh, on this one. So definitely not. That's not 45 the texture old, on his like sleeves. <laughs> that's true. If you oh, look at the texture Drake on his like, sleeves yeah. and gloves, yeah, it's like the Tim Drake look from his redesign uh, in the 90s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely influenced. There's some Tim Drake influence here as well as in the Kevin Nowland design, too, that we see here. Very mm-hmm. Tim Drake looking from the 90s. That's cool. Uh, especially with the hair, you know? So 
Uh, we got a whole variety of Robin variations on the next one that mess with the classic design. So if we look in the bottom, yeah. they're just like, yeah, let's let's mess around with it, make it look like a Star Trek uniform. Literally, that's what it <laughs> oh, says here. No. <laughs> exactly, it says Star Trek. Uh, we got another one where it's a giant triangle that meets his belt that now points down to his crotch. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got a blue it and black It says Burt one. Ward on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but what's interesting about this is that it says that they considered doing a Robin spinoff with sketches by Glenn Murakami that would have shown a, quote, slightly younger, more energetic Robin as he might have looked in his solo adventures. This almost sounds like they were planning to do some sort of Robin prequel show where he was younger and takes place in between the flashbacks of Robin's Reckoning and the actual show. Because if you remember, like in BTAS, Dick Grayson gets adopted by Bruce Wayne when he's just like really tiny, when he's like 10 or 12 yeah. years old. <laughs> And then we never see him as Robin until, you know, we only see him as Robin in present day when he's already a grown man in college. So, oh, so we never really let that get time Saul. open. Yeah, yeah. We, you never really see kid Robin. It's always sort of like the youngest you see is like 18-year-old Robin. That's so, kind of cool. I mean, I kind of wish they yeah. did that now. but Yeah, that was yeah. their wait, I think, to because I, I think they knew this was sort of the beginning of just like, wait a minute, how does this work without it being just flat-out child endangerment? So... Mm. They were like, you, our compromise is he's 18 years old. What do you think about I his think blue there and black was a, outfit? <laughs> yeah. What's <laughs> going on there? That's weird. I kind of dig it. It's, you know, I when I first looked at it, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. But now I'm looking at it, I'm like, you know what? This makes sense in terms of an evolution into Nightwing. Oh, yeah. That is, that's, that's interesting think point, about it. Yeah. Ben. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's like, ah, you know what? I don't like this red. Fuck red. I kind of like. like I want you back in the red. I would like. You it look as too an dark. I need you as target figure. practice. Like a variant. <laughs> oh yeah, that's I think true. Pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> get o- get on. Odin on the case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Robert. <laughs> yes. Thinks he needs his toy. There, there was a Green Lantern Star Trek crossover comic. So mm. this is in the DC world. So true. It'd be in, at least in comic form. It'd be cool to see Batman Dick is on, a the, on the Enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what they would do, but it would be it would be cool. It would yes. be cool at least for oh, one yeah. or two issues. Somebody's got to write it. So we'll Somebody. See. There's probably fan fiction out there already. Oh, probably. Yeah. yeah. You just do shit with the fucking um, what you call it um, the teleporter or whatever. Yeah. Have them just pop yeah. in there somehow. Mm-hmm. We have what's closer to the final design here as well as the sort of final design or early versions of the final design along with Dick Grayson and stuff. So uh, that's pretty much it for Robin. We don't really have that much variation. I don't think with, with the heroes uh, as much as we're, we have with the villains who are coming up, but uh, you know, Batgirl, for example, looks very much like Batgirl on the show. The colors are just a little lighter in what we're looking at here, but Mm -hmm. that's pretty much what we got in the actual episode. And then they went from the uh, sort of blue and yellow look to the black uh, for when they changed changed over to Kids WB, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. everything got redesigned over costume with more black in it. But yes, um, but yeah, she pretty much looked like this from the beginning. Uh, it seems uh, Gordon, however, went through some changes. So <laughs> we're gonna look at this sketch <laughs> where at first it just looks like a sketch of Batman, but if you look closely, we got Commissioner Gordon with a mm-hmm. huge ass chin. <laughs> Uh, his I love hair the is chins. All, luscious his hair is all slicked back. Yeah, it's not it's not the like rooster hairdo that he's got in the animated series. <laughs> and he's blatantly smoking a pipe. He looks mm-hmm. like what would be like an old school Disney version. Yeah, he of, does. Of yeah, him, you know the Glen Keen Gordon. Yeah, he's about to break into song, some sort of Alan yeah. Menken song. <laughs> yeah, it looks like he's like talking to Pinocchio's creator or some shit. <laughs> Or I don't know. <laughs> yeah, this sounds like very old Geppetto. school Disney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Geppetto. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, and then, as I said, he's blatantly smoking a pipe, which is not, which, you know, was not allowed in the actual show. But obviously is them evoking the Commissioner Gordon in the comics when, you know, back in the days where smoking was not like a banned thing in kids entertainment. They were so. the fucking doctors were recommending that shit, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> Mad Men <Whoops>. days. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, more of Kevin Nolan's version of Gordon, more heavy yeah. set in this version, a little he bit more so... Pat Hingle. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was gonna say, Pat Hingle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this this this... this this version of Gordon though looks like he's <laughs> under a lot of stress and he's got problems <laughs> with his wife at home. Like I can feel the <laughs> stress. 
the Perfect. stress in this this one. <laughs> Especially the one on the right where he's just like, oh, god damn it. Yeah, yep. yeah. Look, he, really he's, he's, he's drinking coffee at 2 a.m., <laughs> you know? Yes. That's, this is, that's, this is yeah. Gordon here. Uh, of course, we have the final design that we know. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Man, now, now that we looked at the oversized pants from before, I'm seeing it in every design. Uh, yes, yes. So it also says, please note, Commissioner Gordon will no longer use a pipe. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Our so, overlords got back to us, and they said it habit. was a no-go. Their compromise, though, is that it's cold in Gotham, so when he spoke, you know, the steam would come up, and that would sort of have the same effect with the, with the smoke, I think. So um, I thought that was clever. And uh, Yeah, yeah, that's true. Colored inversion of Gordon with the classic. I was about to say the classic brown trench coat, but it looks more orange in this, but mm-hmm. you know what I mean. And the old school pants where the fucking, uh, <laughs> they go up past the tie, dude. It's <laughs> up under real his man. nipples. It's got to <laughs> yeah. go up above the gut. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, uh, man, this right. shit's great. And we got an early sketch of Bullock here done by Chris Dent. No relation, no relation to Christopher Dent, the, the father of Harvey Dent. Um, and we also have the design for the GCPD headquarters, as done by Richie Chavez, also painted by Steve Butts. Uh, and the final design, of course, of Bullock is what we got. Like, there's, there's not a lot of variation from what I could find. We couldn't find, like, early versions of Bullock. It's kind of... And I think part of that as well is just, like, eh, close enough when it comes to the civilian characters. You don't really need a ton of variations on them. Um, yeah. As we can see here, Montoya. Montoya was a character created for the show. Um, these are done by Lynn Naylor and, uh, looks pretty close to what we got in terms of Montoya in the show. So that's cool. Um, I, we also couldn't find any early concept art for the vehicles. Everything seemed to be exactly what it was. We got this police blimp and police helicopter. Um, but you know, the artist the ones like that... boom, motherfucker. <laughs> One take. Here you go. You're all welcome. we need. Yeah. It's I'm waiting like on my check. <laughs> It's not like the ADA Battlefield that had like 50 different versions. So there's like, yeah. they're like just, just do this. Uh, so in terms of the Batmobile, we've got the BTAS Batmobile right here. Again, could not find, I'm surprised Beautiful. we could not find any other takes on the Batmobile. You would think that they would have different variations just to get to this, but it just seems like, no, we had this from the beginning. This is what we want. And it's perfect. It is, you know, what the 89 Batmobile is for live action, this Batmobile is for animation. Just can't be beat. Yeah, absolutely. And we got the afterburner in the back in tribute yeah. to, you know, the live action versions. Yeah, that's the uh, toy of this ones. too. Super toyetic. Yeah. Toyetic. And then we got these other vehicles, of course, with the Batwing and the Batmobile. Uh, I mean, not the Batwing, the Bat Cycle and the Batboat. The Batwing and the Batmobile after this. Uh, so uh, pretty much what you see is exactly what came from the very beginning, it seems, uh, on this. So that is what we got for vehicles. We've seen the concept art for the heroes, the vehicles, and for Gotham City, but what about the villains? We'll be covering all of them after the break. It's time to tap in with the HyperX Quadcast S microphone. The stunning HyperX Quadcast S features dynamic, customizable RGB lighting, a convenient tap to mute sensor, and four selectable polar patterns. So we can broadcast crystal clear audio, whether you're gaming, streaming, podcasting, or impressing your remote colleagues and classmates. So what are you waiting for? Join the Quad Squad and tap in today with the HyperX Quadcast S microphone. Come on in, what can I get you? Sure, I've heard of Hair of the Dogcast. They're that podcast about video games and beer. From the latest gaming headlines to diving deep into the games of yesterday to sampling and reviewing craft beer from all over the world, Hair of the Dogcast is here for the gamer and beer lover in all of us. Available weekly on the Greenlit Podcast Network. Take a time machine back to before the world went to hell around the year 2000. The 80s and 90s were so rad. The movies, the music, the TV, the games, that's what I want to talk about. If you're cool enough, join us and listen to Less Than 2000, because that's all we talk about. Adam and Chad live Less Than 2000. Lord have mercy, y'all. Do you like hounds? Do you enjoy pooches? Do you find yourself enjoying time spent with that of canines? Talking about dogs, y'all. As you might have heard... 
Superhero Stuff You Should Know has now teamed up with BarkBox. For every month, you get a box for your special canine. Pooches. Or hounds. That's right. One free extra month if you go to BarkBox.com slash Superhero Stuff Pod. Follow the link and you'll get a free extra month valued at $35 and valid for all multi-length plans. So get the BarkBox for your hound, for your pooch, for your canine. Your doggo will thank you. We're back, and we're going to cover the rogues gallery of Batman the Animated Series and what they originally looked like. But first, I thought I would show a quick picture that I love. I'm going to call this censorship. <laughs> <Yep>. So <laughs> what this, is, the fuck, dude? this is concept art that was meant to encapsulate <laughs> everything they weren't allowed to do in Batman the Animated Series. Oh, that's hilarious. Their okay. way to cope with it is to, is to put it all in one painting. So what we have here for the uh, audio listeners is Batman is crashing out of a window with a kid holding on to him to show that they couldn't put children in serious danger. Yep. Batman is choking Joker with <laughs> one hand. Again, not allowed, I don't think. Joker flat out shoots a hole into Batman. Nope. Uh, we got a cross here to represent religion. We got a bottle of poison. A syringe is behind Joker. And, of course, most notable is a naked Catwoman. Smoking. Who's also somehow falling out of the window and a cigarette is coming out of her mouth to show that smoking's not allowed either. <laughs> now the and breaking, is nudity. I know the breaking glass was something that the censors didn't like. Um, that's an alcohol that's bottle, Ben. There's What's three the X's? X's, though. Uh, uh, originally, yeah, that yeah. was um, used for uh, alcohol. It's oh, like an okay. old timey okay. You must yeah. not have watched poison. too many uh, Looney Tunes <laughs> back in the day, man. <laughs> Uh, we all know from Bugs Bunny and shit That's that that right. is alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, Batman's choking him for drinking, not for trying to poison anybody. Oh yeah, you can telling me you can po- you can use poison all you want in the cartoon, but uh, <clears throat> no drinking. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So clearly, what happened is this that is fucking Joker had amazing. A naked Catwoman hostage as she was smoking. He tried to drink, <laughs> hostage. and Batman didn't. Basically, he didn't like it, so he grabbed Joker by the neck, and they all fell out the window together. It looked like some Catwoman and Joker were having a party, and Batman, <laughs> yeah. lame old kid, you come why wasn't I invited? Up. Yeah, Batman's trying to the, shove like... religion down his throat. He's got his crucifix <laughs> and he just slung at him. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, Don't kill him, the Lord Batman! And <laughs> oh man. I yeah. love I love that they did this though. Like, yeah. let's yeah. just yeah. draw everything we can't <laughs> right here in one. Oh man, this is, it's this amazing. is amazing. It's amazing. Uh, so let's go into the real concept art for uh, the villain. So we have some more Kevin Nolan, uh, different characters. We have a very hairy man bat, which is not what we got in the show, mm. um, and characters with different faces. Uh, and uh, we're just going to go one by one on a lot of them. And I'm going to go in the order of the characters as they appeared in the series. So the first one up is actually Man Bat because he showed up in the beginning with On Leather Wings. So uh, Kevin Nolan did a lot of these and he's got a much scarier version, I think, of Man Bat. uh, Yeah. Uh, He's thinner and his face is just a lot more fucked up. So uh, I'm going to scroll through here because we got a lot of these uh, (laughs) on it. But yeah, once you you see his face, it's just like, oh shit. It reminds me of Hellboy a little bit. Uh, what's the artist? Mike Mignolia? Yeah, it does. It? Yeah, Mignola. Yeah. Mignola, probably. Mignola. Yeah, yeah that's uh, what it reminds me of. It's like some Hellboy illustrations. Yeah. This is freaky showing his teeth. Yeah. Over here. It's kind of yeah. cool, but this is probably nixed for censorship. It's too, yeah, it's too dark. Um, yeah. Especially when we get to the, he has a much darker detailed version here. Oh, that's And I'm cool. like, dude, oh, yeah, th- this awesome. looks great. If you put this in a comic, but animating that in the show that we know, I just don't see it fitting in. Yeah, it wouldn't work. Yeah. Uh, so they went with something less scary. With this as the final design, which is still good. But when you look at what could have been, you're just like, damn, that would have been cool too. But also probably, you know, depending on how young you were during the time, it might have given you nightmares. So this man probably that a good thing. seems like he would fit into the Gargoyles show. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's yeah. true. Shutting yeah. chain and stuff like that. I can't remember if Bruce Tim. Had something to do with the character des- designs on that show as well. Now I just picture um, Man Bat flapping his wings to the Gargoyles theme song as he's going hey, through. Oh, it, it works, yeah. <laughs> it does, yeah. Um, I couldn't find any designs, or Dan couldn't find any designs either, of his alter ego, Kurt Langstrom. But Dan did find this 
which is a character design from Kevin Nolan that says Francine. Mm. And those who are Man Bat fans know that Francine Langstrom is his wife. She looks very different here than she does in the final design in the episode where she has uh, glasses uh, and looks very different, very more Bruce Tim like, uh, of course. Yeah, uh, but that's what we got for our comparison. So the original Francine, who basically just kind of looks like a general, shorter haired '90s, very much like a Karen. Actually, yeah, you this is yeah. like late '80s, <laughs> early '90s. Yes, um, mom look like she's yeah. going that to helmet. soccer practice or some. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And then uh, the version they went with, which is a lot more like scientist. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and here she is with Doctor March, who's another character from the first episode on Leather Wings. So. That's what we got. Big pants. Uh, yeah. Also big. Well, just, yeah. <laughs> Oversized everything. Big that, pants. That's true. That's true. <laughs> big pants. <laughs> lots, of, lots of knowledge in there. He's a scientist. No one knew that that was the original are. line. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Dr. That's Marsh true. just walks into each room saying, like, big pants. <laughs> <laughs> With that expression on his face. <laughs> It's just like, stop saying that, Dr. March. Bruce Wayne just says it out of nowhere to him just to, just to see what his reaction is. Big pants. That's my line. Big pants. <laughs> oh, shit. Big pants. Right. Uh, next up, we have Dumb the big face. man. Dumb <laughs> face. <laughs> Dr. March comes in. He's like, big pants. And Bruce Wayne's like, dumb face. Like, oh. 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 <laughs> they got me. He does so just look like a miserable turd, doesn't he? <laughs> he's got a different kind of stress that uh, <laughs> well, that Gordon has. This is um, IBS. <laughs> yes, I, yes, it's IBS. I gotta use the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Doctor. For those who remember, Doctor March is basically a red herring. You're supposed to yeah. think that he's man bat in it, so I guess that's why he looks so sinister looking. So. <laughs> Uh, moving on to he went on has some good points (laughs) that's what he's going on to one of the big points (laughs) (laughs) all right we have some early sketches here i really like the silhouette of batman jumping off Mm -hmm. oh yeah for sure uh, which is really cool and then on the left we have some early sketches of what looks like some uh, mad love type art Mm -hmm. uh with harley and the joker which leads us into talking about the main man joker so here's uh here's you know an early version of the bruce tim Joker in 1991, but we have some other designs that look very different. Uh, this Joker Ooh. has very caricature like, you know, it's uh, like Ren and eyebrows. Stimpy. Mm, yeah. Yes, that's, yes, yeah. I, this guy's I got a, right. This one's got an Elvis hairstyle. <laughs> then do you know what this uh, hairstyle is called? Because it, it has a specific name. Uh, not off the top of my head. It's called a it's duck called tail. the balding cowlick. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was actually no Andrew, no joke. It was called a ducktail. It was very popular, oh, I think, yeah, yeah, right yeah, okay. around the fifties. So yeah, it's it's like you grow oh, your hair out and it flips out in the back like that. I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's. Yeah. I mean, this is it like the, the iconic Joker here. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. That is true. So yeah, this is some original stuff. Um, unless this guy has less crazy hair, but this is Kevin Nowlin's version of uh, the Joker. It's pretty close to what we got, except the eyes are different. You might notice that the, the yeah. eyes here are closer to the Joker from the later seasons, where it was just the the white beads that come mm-hmm. out of the black, as opposed to just the full on just regular eyes that we got. So that's kind of some interesting foreshadowing. Uh, Bruce Tim again was something close to what we got, and uh, <laughs> the dimple. This is well, yeah. That's, <laughs> he's got the letter six on his chin. Yes. Also, <laughs> looks like out. he's the teeth are just. <laughs> Well, I'll just I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> we I know just, that they said that he was inspired by like the Blue Meanies uh, from Yellow Submarine, mm. the Beatles. I always think mm. about that with those big yellow teeth. I've only seen sure. clips of that man. I mm. I listened to the album, but I have never really watched it. Uncultured swine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh um, man, I never liked that song that much, dude. Bold statement by me. Anyway, let's keep moving on. It's not great. <laughs> Bruce <laughs> Tim's uh, Joker here with the hat and the Tommy gun. Uh, so yeah, this is pretty close to what we ended up getting. We've got the Joker robots with the hands turned to machine guns, mm-hmm. and we also got a shot of Joker here looking very freaky with the you know wearing the straight jacket in Arkham Asylum. So that's pretty cool. And of course, the final classic design oh, yeah. with uh, thin pants. 
Thin, Joker. thinner pants. Yes, he's the only sure. one with thin pants. Thinner. <laughs> so. Thin, thin, yeah, thin, it's, it's still kind of big by our standards these days, but yes. Thin pants. <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes him such a good detective. Batman just notes the pants. Every single time. <laughs> I always loved how they uh, illustrated Joker in the show where he has like basically black hair with a green highlight. I always oh, thought that yeah, was kind of unique. Mm. I know like, yeah, depending at, like in the early comic books, he does. It does look like a lighting effect. And I mm. always thought about it looking like um, iridescent, kind of like a rooster's feathers where they're like black, but have like a green sheen to them. Mm. That's kind of how I imagined this Joker would look like in real life. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting because it, it takes care of the green hair, but it's not yeah. blatantly green. So they, they found such a genius way to to do that without just going crazy on green hair. Mm hmm. Well. They had to go crazy on green for the next one. We got Poison Ivy here. So uh, it looks like they may have considered putting Ivy in a mask at one point because we have that here on the yeah. top left. Uh, but most of I mean, most of the Poison Ivy designs are pretty close to what we would end up getting in the you know final version. We have another sketch of Ivy here uh, as they're doing a bunch of her facial expressions. The closest I could find to something that's different is actually in the storyboards for the episode Pretty Poison. And as we've talked about before on, on the pod, like the storyboards don't necessarily reflect how it's going to be done or animated. Though you would think they would try to make it pretty close since it's animated, but the Poison mm -hmm. Ivy here looks very different from the Bruce Tim style. It doesn't look like Bruce Tim style at all. Yeah. Uh, so it's very, you know, closest we got to a different look at Poison Ivy. This is exclusive, it seems, to the Andrew Farrago Gina McIntyre book. So check that guy, mm. check that out, and buy that again from our store. <laughs> And your whisper bidet. It's got a lot of stuff. You can read whisper it bidets. while you're sitting on your whisper bidet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Poison Ivy would want you to do that. It saves the environment. That's down right. on the paper. You can't uh, have that book on your lap for too long, though, uh, because you will lose <laughs> circulation to your legs. <laughs> it, is yeah. it is a thick-ass book. <laughs> it weighs about 45 pounds. <laughs> Because it's just chock full of content, y'all. <laughs> yes, it is. Concussion-worthy <laughs> book. Yes. Yes. Um, so we have, you know, a lot more. Bruce Tim has a lot of Poison Ivy, and it seems like some of this is for his personal collection, I would say. Uh, no pants. Booty crap, and, you mean? Yeah. I mean, at some point, you're just like, sir, this is a kid's Whoa. show. Yeah, this is, uh, this is never making it. <laughs> yeah, that's just for Bruce Tim. It didn't make it past standards and practices uh, <laughs> there, Tim. <laughs> How come? So yeah, this is this is from Bruce Tim's personal collection. Is this collection. fine for us Ivy. to be for, to be on YouTube, dude? <laughs> oh, that's yeah, probably all right. It'll yes. be okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, they slimmed down Ivy as well for the redesign. Uh, not as good. Not as good, in my opinion. This one looks like a Pixie little bit more boots. teenagery too. Yeah, which is almost foreshadowing of the Batman show where Poison Ivy was a teenager. Mm, yeah, don't ask. And her so, butt got even uh, smaller. Look at that on the right, Ben. That's true. Good lord, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's a crime against humanity. <laughs> huh. Everybody, everybody in Gotham just got a liposuction or something between I, seasons because yeah. it's ridiculous how thin everybody got. I don't hate the like outfit being black with like a green highlight sometimes, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of her skin being like the kind of pale mint green yeah. that it was. I mean, that, it's an interesting like choice, but I always like the yeah. way she looks before. I always prefer her Ivy looking like a somewhat of a normal person. Maybe the yeah. red is like not natural looking, but yeah. looking somewhat normal, having her be, you know, I mean, I love the Harley Quinn show. It's the best version of the, the poison Ivy character, yeah. I think, but you know, I'm like, eh, it doesn't have to be green skin. It makes sense, but you don't have to, you know, fuck her up that much in terms of what her skin looks like based off the, the stuff. But I think they, you know, sometimes they just go crazy. You know? mm -hmm. so. Chlorophyll more like Boraphyll. Am I right? <laughs> 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 uh, let's go from Ivy to her ex-boyfriend, Two-Face. So uh, this is an early design for Two-Face that's very interesting. It's from 1990. He's very Golden Age Two-Face-like. Yep. He's got a bow tie that isn't oh, two-toned yeah. yet, but he's got a bow tie. And Harvey's face is very square in contrast to the one in the show. I have a theory this is probably changed because they're like, well, we can't make him look too much like Bruce Wayne. So oh, yeah. let's yeah. change his features more. So 
Uh, in contrast, this is the Harvey Dent that we got in the show that has you know a longer, more angular face compared to Bruce Wayne. You can easily full tell lips. that they're two different people. Yeah, it's Jay uh, Leno with full lips. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> So I, that's, that's true, actually. Now that I look at it again. I know that this is kind of a common misconception because of other people that I've seen online. Did you ever think that mm-hmm. Harvey Dent was of another ethnicity? I think we've yeah we've talked about that, dude. I, I, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. At yeah. most, I'm like, yeah, maybe he's Italian. You know, like, I never <laughs> yeah. really, I never really thought that he was supposed to be black or Hispanic or anything else. You know. Well, I okay. Know that, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, right. I know my that... my brother brought this up to me, and I had never thought about it once in my life. I just thought he was white, I guess. Mm-hmm. But he, we're watching the same show growing up, and he told me three or four years ago that he thought that he always thought this Harvey was black. And I was like, "Wow, okay, interesting." But yeah, this is this mm-hmm. is a thing, and maybe it was a nod to uh, Batman eighty nine. I the guess, lady. yeah, yeah. Well, I do know that um, Bruce Timm was originally basing Harvey's appearance off of an actor named Ralph Bellamy, who I guess like very white. He was very white, but uh, he does have Mm. some Sicilian features and Mm, he does kind of look like this. But I think it's like tan that they made Harvey in the show. And of course, having the full lips compared to most of the characters having like one line for a mouth, I guess that kind of made people think that he might have not been white. But I always think that's kind of interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> always, I, I think at some point, names get thrown around in terms of fan casting for Two-Face. And when somebody mentioned uh, Bobby Cannavale being a good Two-Face, I'm just like, that dude would look basically like this in live action. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on that. Yeah. So like, that's why I'm just like, yeah, if, if anything, he looks Italian. You know, Harvey Dent looks Italian. Yeah, um, to me. Yeah, but that's right. Uh, what's interesting is that we look at some other versions that Bruce Timm did, and I think it's very even more blatant that Harvey is white, like he is in the comics, like this. He's yeah. very white in this. Yeah, one. this is unmistakable here. Yeah. Um, also, a lot more of a pretty boy in this, as you can tell. Like, yeah. look at those lips. <laughs> He's got makeup on, basically. He's got makeup. He's got eyeliner. That on. Eye- yeah. uh, <laughs> eyebrow is <was> just like. <laughs> <laughs> It's on fleek. Uh, and then another suave one uh, with the cigarette they could not use, of course. So this is right. a smoking Two-Face uh, mm-hmm. on it, but looking slightly different than he did in the show. Uh, and, of course, here's the final design uh, on it. Weirdly, doesn't seem it doesn't have the line through the tie here, but obviously that right. ended up happening. Uh, and then we get the design where he was slimmed down more for the redesigns. So... In general, I'm not really a huge fan of the redesigns, with one exception, which is Scarecrow. Oh, to yeah. me, personally, I think Scarecrow is the only one where I'm just like, okay, that looks badass. But everything else, I'm just like, eh, I like the other version better for most of these. Um, going on to the next villain is the Penguin. And as we're seeing here, this is the Kevin Kevin Nolan's designs for Penguin, where we could have had a more traditional-looking Penguin mm-hmm. in the beginning. This is a very classic Golden Age, Silver Age Penguin a more even more heavy set version of the Burgess Meredith version that we saw in the 60s show. So this is very classic here. And there's even this concept painting of this version of painting. <laughs> oh, so, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, we got the contrast of the Batman we know from the animated series with a penguin that looks very different from what we got at that time. So he's got the purple striped pants. He's got a white bow tie, uh, the monocle, and, and you know, the, the works with... I thought at first it was a helicopter umbrella, but that does not look like anything's just going. Just a plain so old like umbrella. He's just, gliding. <laughs> he's just gliding with an umbrella. He's That's got a bag of bird seed. Batman is just picking on him. <laughs> <laughs> There's it's no dollar funny. sign on that bag. <laughs> I know. I should have known there was no dollar sign. <laughs> if Sam Raimi directed this, those would definitely have dollar signs. Oh, yeah. Just have Alfred Molina back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 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 Honestly, not wouldn't be the worst choice, I guess. Oh no! Oh, and just have do the same thing with, yeah. <laughs> with the bag of money. Yeah. Uh, as we talked about in our episode about the influence of Danny DeVito's Penguin, the studio really wanted the Penguin to look closer to Danny DeVito's. Uh, Bruce Tim has this sketch done that I know we had said is pretty much what uh, he might have drawn when he visited the set to draw Danny DeVito. However, uh, this caption kind of just says it's a preliminary Penguin sketch, and. Uh, it just doesn't really look much like DeVito. Honestly, it is misleading. Movie, so I have a feeling. Yeah. Yeah. I remember reading I, I that as a kid. I don't think this is actually what he did. Yeah. 
Yeah. Go ahead. I just remember reading this as a kid, and I was thinking, like, this is what he drew when he saw Danny DeVito, because it looks like Alfred Hitchcock. It doesn't look like anything yeah, like he would yeah, have seen right, on right. set. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this is more of a misconception now that I'm looking at the actual source here, where I'm just like, okay, I think he did go on the set to see what he would look like, but I don't think mm-hmm. this is what he drew, because this... He's just not dressed like this in the in the movie. He doesn't look like this at all. As, as Zach said, he looks like, you know, Alfred Hitchcock meets Bob Hoskins. Uh, smoking again as well. And smoking again. Yeah, goddamn. So uh, <laughs> I feel like what he probably drew was this, which is the final design here. Uh, and a lot closer, you've got the um, sort of the, the suit is in a similar style. You've got mm-hmm. the webbed hands like DeVito. Uh, the long, you know, the balding look with the long hair and stuff. It's mm-hmm. all very DeVito-esque. So I think that's what he actually got from it. So Yeah. And that's the final version of Penguin that we got until they decided to redesign. And, you know, I, I guess in terms of second place, Scarecrow number one, second place would probably be Penguin in terms of the redesign for Penguin. Because I'm just like, oh, cool. They made him look more classic. I'm cool with that in the, in the redesign. So uh, he would take second place, I think. Next is... Mr. Freeze, who looks pretty much the same. Definitely mm-hmm. skipped leg day, as we can see here. <laughs> not um, big pants. <laughs> no. Not big pants at all. Uh, <laughs> but he looks, on the left, he looks pretty close to what he did in the animated so- yeah. show. But on the right, very different. Uh, very different Victor Freeze face. Much less friendly. Um, probably Poor because posture. they did not put in... There's no pupils. He has worse posture than that Kevin Nolan Space Ghost Batman that we saw. <laughs> uh, he just looks really down at this point. He's like, God damn it. Batman foiled me. Like, it's just, he's he's not had a good day in this picture. Yeah. But uh, it's interesting to take a look at what Victor Freeze could have looked like in this. Uh, and then from the Batman animated book, we have a look at uh, his laboratory when he was Victor Freeze. And then, of course, some storyboards of the opening. As he's talking to the, uh, you know, Nora through the snow globe type thing. So that's pretty cool on this. Uh, One of the characters that I think changed the most, however, was Catwoman, as we're about to see. So here's a collection of different models. And I'm just like, okay, Robin looks pretty close. Joker looks close. Mr. Freeze looks cool. What the hell's going on with Catwoman? (laughs) So this is a very 1960s Julie Newmar-esque Catwoman. She's mm-hmm. got cat ears plus the domino mask combo with the, like, open hair out. So think, you know, again, 66 show, Anne Hathaway, that type of look. Was, you know, she's not wearing a cowl in this. But I think, like with DeVito's Penguin, they wanted something a little closer to what was in the movie. So they kind of had to give Catwoman a cowl. So let's take a look at what they came up with. Here's Kevin Nowlin's version, which is similar to what we got in the redesign era, where mm-hmm. she's just basically in all black, um, but not what we originally got. Bruce Tim takes a crack at it, but notice Catwoman is still all black, and her ears are a little longer than what we got in the uh, in the actual show. Uh, but they sort of continue this idea of Catwoman in all black in this type of look uh, for a while, and they play around with it um, in the Batman animated book as well. You can see that they have their own different theories of what she should look like in the shadows. Mm-hmm. With like no next to each one, they didn't want her. No, too no, 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 no. It. Yeah, <laughs> it's a um, basically that they want to make sure that she's uh, pretty much in black at all times. It says down here. Uh, it's kind of like Daredevil. Have, yeah, well, that's that's funny that you say that. Actually, we're about <laughs> to see something else about that. But yeah, it says that they wanted to make sure that she had rim light. On it so that she wasn't completely uh mm. you know uh i guess obscured. whited out by the the yeah or obscured by the uh, the lighting so mm-hmm. that's interesting uh we have another all black catwoman on the left and then something a little closer to what we got in the final design with catwoman on the right where it looks like okay maybe she doesn't have to be in all black maybe we can mix <laughs> it up and stuff but she still has those devil horns on the side <laughs> that aren't really what they look like in the <laughs> show um and it continued on here, but it, it says specifically ears more like Wally Wood Daredevil horns. Huh. So that actually was deliberate. They wanted her to look like Daredevil for some reason. I don't know why. That's funny. Um, Wally Wood was one of the original artists for Daredevil uh, back in the 60s. So that's who they're referring to. But it's interesting. They're playing around with different ears here. Um, and the other one that they're playing around with are these longer ears at the top that look closer to sort of, I don't know, a little bit like the cat costume that you would find at a halloween party mm-hmm. type of thing. 
So uh, ultimately they went with this, and I don't think I realized until looking through the concept art that her ears are kind of like those daredevil horns in the show. <laughs> I just never really connected it that way until now. So uh, that's what we got. And then, of course, uh, we have a look at the black outfit that they ended up switching to when they did the redesign. So that's uh, with Catwoman. Um, however, there were other original female characters in here, most notably Harley Quinn. And this is the original Harley Quinn. Oh, movie. wow. Very different. So she looks closer to a henchwoman you would see in Batman 66, uh, sort of with a simpler design. She has a domino mask, no jester hat. Her hair is all visible and big. Uh, on the side, it says 1940s screwball, Betty Hutton, Gloria Graham, Claudette Colbert <laughs> with attitude. Sassy, See, smart, dangerous. Yeah, that's what it looks like. It looks like she's answering the phone for the Ghostbusters. What's that woman's <laughs> name? Uh, I forget her name. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's really, uh, how can we describe this even more for the listener? Um, just a lot goofier looking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely doesn't look like, uh, doesn't look like what we would end up seeing at all. Because the like the whole gesture design isn't really there. It's more of just like the like card looking diamonds that go down yeah. her legs and the two tones, but it's not really, it's not really the just her look at all. Yet. She, yeah. She doesn't have the, the ears, those, yeah. uh, whatever you call those things. Mm -hmm. Well, the gesture uh, just, ears on those, the hat. Yeah. Yeah. But those yeah. glasses or is that a domino mask? That's Maybe mask. it's a combination of both actually. Yeah. It could be both. <laughs> okay. Ben, isn't this one drawn by uh, Paul Dini? Wasn't this like his sketch? To show like what his idea was um, for the character, it would make sense because it doesn't look like Bruce Tim style. Mm -mm. So yeah, it doesn't. Uh, yeah. This could be really cool though. Uh, it says that she plays dumber than she is, and her hair may have a two tone streak. So that's like the first foreshadowing of the idea of the top of her head having the black and red, because that's what you look at at the jester hat. She has black and mm -hmm. red, uh, two toned in on her hat, but obviously she's not wearing that in this. I'm surprised that they didn't try to like do some sort of tribute to this at some point. Like the Batman yeah. 66 comic series is perfect for this. Well, type they did of thing. do a little and statue. I, I do have one. A statue oh, yeah, of yeah. this like first appearance of Harley Quinn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's, I'd like to see it in like the era of the, you know, the Dozier verse, you know, of, yeah. The, but they didn't give it to her in the Batman 66 comic series. And they didn't do that in the Batman versus two face movie. So I'm just like missed opportunity because this yep. is perfect for Adam West era. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, here's pretty much what we got in comparison. The classic look of Harley Quinn. Um, some alternate faces at the top. They specify here that the top of the mask can change expressions like eyebrows. And it notes <laughs> that the ears of the Jester hat will droop down when she's sad. <laughs> Poor Harley. <laughs> um, yeah. And then some inked versions of Harley from, of course, Bruce Tibbs' personal collection. Uh, so <laughs> that's what we got for, for Harley Quinn. These pervert <laughs> artists. <laughs> <laughs> He's just doing his job. Come on. Yeah. yeah uh, sure. Obviously, All the right. one on the right says 95, nine, I think it says 95, 99 on it. So, obviously, this is way before our first appearance. We're getting past concept art here. But, you know, this is all interesting to take a look at Bruce Tim stuff outside of the show. Um, he had a few for him. <laughs> and a few for him. <laughs> like that poison ivy, man. <laughs> yeah. This shit's crazy. Uh, next is the villain of the upcoming Batman movie himself. The Riddler, and oh, he would have looked a lot different. So we have some very old school design here. The one on the left says, quote, one of Bruce Timm's first attempts at the Prince of Puzzlers in 1990. He gives a nod to the hyperactive performance of Frank Gorshin, the Riddler in the 1966 Batman TV series. This take on the character was abandoned when the Riddler became a creature of cold intellect, and sardonic <laughs> wit, greatly enhanced by actor John Glover's supercilious delivery. So I don't picture John Glover voicing this version of the Riddler. This is... Very Frank Gorshin esque. He's had he has two guns, one in each mm -hmm. hand. He's in the you know the spandex Riddler outfit, uh, and just has a very goofy expression on his face. <laughs> and the one on the right, we have uh, used car salesman Riddler. That's what I was like thinking. An, he's got an oversized blazer, uh, an oversized tie with a giant uh, question mark on it, and uh, a very different hat compared to what you would you know com you would sort of associate. And the we'll pants coming up above the tie again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> He's got high waters on. <laughs> That's true. You can see his ankles. My favorite this. my favorite thing we've discussed about the Riddler is people, the writers have a hard time writing the Riddler <laughs> because they're like, it's too hard to write goddamn riddles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just hard to write a fucking riddle. 
one that's it's probably why for a while, yeah, for a while there wasn't much of him in the in the series, and also yeah. not much of him in the comics either. So that's yeah. that's uh, that's a fair point, though. It is. Uh, I will I'm excited to see what uh, mm-hmm. Pat Bat is going to handle. Yes, uh, this is the Kevin Nolan Riddler again, very Frank Gorshin esque. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, you know, nobody thought to do the Zodiac Killer in the '90s for some reason. I wonder why. It's like, come on, this is totally appropriate for a kid. Yeah, show. that's true. <laughs> so, uh, ultimately, they went with this approach with the John Glover Riddler wearing the suit, um, you know, the classic suit outfit that they had Frank Gorshin wear when he first appeared in the 1966 show since he didn't always want to wear the spandex suit. So, <clears throat> here's what we got. Right, that's right. Next, Iconic. we have the Al Ghul. Yes, we have the Al Ghul family. Very different designs here. Kevin Nolan's designed for Roz and Talia, or Raish, I should say, since they call him Raish in this. So um, the Raish Al Ghul here retains Neil Adams' intentions for him to have no eyebrows, as we can see here. So those those creepy, beady eyes actually fit here very much since, mm-hmm. since this is Raish Al Ghul. Uh, Talia looks different. Um, she doesn't quite... Ha- I mean, I guess you could, due to the angle, you can kind of see the whole hair drooping over her eye type of thing a little bit. But mm-hmm. uh, it's pretty different otherwise. Uh, another look at Ra or Raish uh, on here. Got a little bit more of a goatee on this one. And next to him is Ubu, his loyal bodyguard. So, uh, <laughs> and then, Ubu. of course, the final design. Uh, final design, which I think is the best design. I mean, clearly, oh, look yeah. at the, the, the features. You know, there's so much character in that face. So, perfect. Yeah. Perfect in this. Uh, Ventriloquist is next. This is an early Kevin Nolan design of the ventriloquist. Character still looks meek, but he has hair in this as opposed to the bald ventriloquist in the show. So I've never seen um, these. These are pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a little closer to the Andrew Sellen type of look. It's a call back to that's the, Andrew, true. The ventriloquist yeah. we interviewed. Yeah, he looks um, like a young ventriloquist or something like that. Like what he would have looked yeah. like when he was younger. Exactly. Yeah, because they aged him up. You know, he's he's mm-hmm. bald with white hair and glasses. He, he's Larry David. In the yep. animated series. <laughs> oh so. man, I still want Larry David to be Mister Mixia Spitlick. <laughs> <laughs> to put him up against Cavill, you know Cavill. What wants are to you doing, back. Superman? I don't know. I'm, I have to work on my uh, Larry David. <laughs> pretty, 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 pretty good flying. <laughs> there, Sup- Superman. <laughs> oh, that was the best. That was the best rumor. That yeah. of course was never going to happen, but no way. There's man. no way they're going to do that. Yeah, but Seinfeld's a huge Superman fan, so like there's that connection. But I don't, I don't know if Larry <laughs> David is as much. But yeah, you never know. You never know. It would just uh, be a move. Like, is the next is the next Man of Steel going to be Parasite, <laughs> Brainiac? No, motherfucker, Mister Mixia Spindlick, <laughs> <laughs> Larry David, he's it's here. Like, okay, guys, you didn't like the tone of Man of Steel. <laughs> <laughs> they would have my attention so much oh, yeah. if they did they that. Would. It would be like, <laughs> damn, dude, they're really doing some crazy shit. They got the cast of Curb, and that Susie's in there as another <laughs> fifth dimensional being who's like pissed <laughs> off at him all the time. Susie plays his wife, <laughs> Mrs. Mixia Mixia Spitlick. Oh, dude, have they ever done that? He's usually kind of a playboy, though, huh? Oh, no, he, he has scene. a wife in the cartoon. Oh, he does have a he, wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. she yeah. looks like so just like a that. rabbit. Yeah. She's really like, oh, definitely yeah, like right. yeah, not the not same like as Susie. him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we could retcon her to be Susie. Man, yeah, be great. exactly. <laughs> oh, dude, this, this thing writes great. itself. Yeah, it would be such a left turn, left uh, out of left field or whatever. But yeah, it'd be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so you wanted your Man of Steel sequel? We're gonna hold off on Brainiac for the moment. To give you, <laughs> Mister. What Mixia you've been Spitlick. asking for? <laughs> what you? Been... <laughs> this is what the fans want. <laughs> what you've been asking for? You this think whole Superman's time. too dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're we're Warner <laughs> Brothers, all right. We got our Pretty f- dark. finger on the pulse of the nation. <laughs> That's what the kids want. <laughs> hey, Pennywise had a really big. Balloon head, you know. I think it could work. That's true, actually. Machete yeah, just does it. Like, yeah. <laughs> Who gives yeah, a fuck Machete at this point? Yeah, Machete delivers it or directs it, and he's got a little bubble-headed <laughs> Mister McSpitlick. He's very creepy this time around. I don't oh, know. Man. I think they should just put Larry David with a bowler hat on and call it a day. Like, you just don't mess Bro. with. Bro, easy Great. Photoshop job, and make don't his mess body with. 
don't mess with greatness. That's exactly right. <laughs> they should just put the curb music every time he pops up, too. <laughs> This is the best idea ever. (laughs) (laughs) Let us know if you want that pitch. Oh, man. (laughs) (laughs) Curb your croup Tony. Our first first Man of Steel 2 pitch was really serious. (laughs) (laughs) This is the sequel to that. (laughs) This is is our sequel. (laughs) How do you follow Metallo? How do you follow Metallo Militia? Larry David is Larry Larry David. Oh, man, that was the best, though, dude. It was the best. <laughs> I was so excited when I read it. Oh, All right, shit. Bane. What were we talking about? <laughs> we're talking oh, yeah, about Batman. <laughs> uh, here's an early look at Bane that says it has a strong Jack Kirby influence on the design. Yeah, That's nice. Interesting. New, New God's Bane. Yeah, when you think about it, they kind of are basing him off of Darkseid in this, uh, uh, this yeah, look that's here. that's true. I never take a liked look at, uh, this Bane's belt. mask. I didn't like that they showed his nose and mouth. I know it was supposed to be more yeah. luchador like, but it, I prefer the way he looks in the comic where, you know, he's just. It's like not as scary. Blank, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not as scary. Oh, well. For, um, forgive my memory, but did he have a Mexican accent in this? South no? American? Yeah. South American? He was? Okay, yeah. The actor that played I him. Think, had... I'm trying to remember because I think in. I think in the early versions, yeah, in early seasons. He has the accent, and then when they did the redesign, they had him do it without the accent. He so oh, it's, it's the same. Uh, it's the same actor. But it's the same actor. It's the same actor though. It's still Henry Silva. Okay, uh, I think he, but he does not put on the accent in the in the later seasons. Okay. There's only like one episode with him in it, and it's um, uh, it's what is it? Over the one. edge, yeah, with Batgirl, yeah, you know, yeah. dreaming she had died, and, and I just yeah, I distinctly remember his lines. I'm just like he does not have the accent in that one. Not as much, okay. no. Yeah. Maybe they're if they were if they had an explanation for it. I don't know if they thought this deeply about it, but like maybe Bane's in America for so long that he just yeah. just lost the accent maybe, by the time yeah. that that happens in continuity. Yeah, it's possible. Or since it's Batgirl's hallucination, she never really met Bane, so she doesn't know what he fucking sounds oh, like. Oh yeah, so that's an interesting as well. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. That's, that's her that interpretation too. of him. But she, he does show up in uh, the nighttime episode when Superman yes. takes over for Batman. So. Oh, We'd have right. to explain that. So okay. I can't remember yeah. what Superman he sounds like in that one. He, it's an excuse for us to rewatch that. It yeah. is, yeah. He did. Yeah. It's a shame that he appears so briefly, like in the read well, the uh, the new series. But I guess like he really only is in like what that one episode of the original series. Yeah, the, the original, one. and then they yeah they brought him back. Yeah, they brought him back and they gave him the BDSM type looking mask and that's so Which I I, I think, actually uh, think his design's pretty cool, the redesign. Uh I don't know. I know he is like kind of in a I wish there was outfit. a little bit more. Yeah, I wish there was a little bit more of the comic comic book in it. Yeah. Like it is scarier. It does look more intimidating. I'll give him that. But yeah, they could have made they could have done a little more with it. I know I remember uh, reading that the show's creators thought they didn't they didn't like Bane as much. They thought he was like a gimmicky villain. So that's why he wasn't in the mm-hmm. series very much. Yeah. I mean, the episode Bane is a clear. You can kind of tell they're just like, okay, well, we got to put this in. So, like, the moment that Bane's like, I will break you. And then Batman just kicks his ass and just yep. gets out of it. You're just like, all right, this is their commentary on Nightfall. <laughs> like, they were not fans of that. <laughs> oh, that's weird. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, not my Batman. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, let's talk about the villains who stayed pretty much the same from what we could find. So <laughs> Scarecrow looks pretty close to what we got in the Nothing to Fear episode. Uh, Jonathan Crane as well. Um, oh, yeah. No chin. He No chin. Very derpy. Yeah, derpy. Very derpy Jonathan Crane. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and young John Crane, who looks like he's on crack. Good <laughs> Lord. He's been listening he's... <laughs> to the Smiths. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he's, he looks like he's been I doing heroin so... with uh, Speedy. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord. My ward is a drug addict. I don't know who this other thin <laughs> yeah. fucking motherfucker is, but he's a drug addict too. They've been listening to Black Sabbath and <laughs> smoking the devil's lettuce. And uh, Scarecrow had like three redesigns, didn't there? Two redesigns. Yeah, because like, they gave him more of a face in the later more episode. More like a jack-o'-lantern then, face. Yeah, with straw yeah, hair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, cool, yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, the... Even though it's not quite traditional, I do like the the redesign where it's just like the skull face is just really creepy. Yeah. So uh, that was cool. Clayface, I know one of Andrew's favorites. 
dude uh, i've said it before episodes. it's one of my favorite episodes like it's to me it's that one and heart of ice mm-hmm. yeah uh the first clay face one man so good and it I saw it probably when it aired, first run aired on Fox as a kid. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure because I was coming home from school to watch it, I think. Mm-hmm. And you just didn't see too many shows where they're basically drowning a guy in fucking clay, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. His his uh, backstory, whatever. And like being eight or nine, seeing that, it was like, oh my God. I was like, <laughs> it was really uh, striking. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of the best like that. And like Heart of Ice gets all the hype. But I think a feet of clay is pretty much what Heart of Ice is for Clayface. Yeah, it's definitely. Really like yeah. Definitely. The perfect origin story for that character. It's so good, dude. The way it yeah. ends. Uh, anyway, I, yeah. that's that's the yeah. gush. I, I could gush yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, <clears throat> Clayface here looking pretty much the same. Other versions of, you know, just designing how he moves and stuff. But yeah, pretty much what we got. Uh and uh, Kevin Crock, I'm mean, Kevin Crock. Kevin, Kevin Crock. No, it's Kevin Crock. <laughs> He's wearing brother to Killer Crock. Footy jeans. There's no end to those <laughs> jeans. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Fin pants. <laughs> He's Capris. definitely skip leg day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kevin Nolan designed Killer Crock, and it looks like they stuck to his design for once, considering that all the that's others did that. Uh, they they changed it so the croc croc like, episodes yeah. were kind of in in the A plus territory they weren't S's huh yeah they're not quite I mean the best one is the one where uh, sideshow like falls in line yeah sideshow exactly. yeah. yeah Zach knew where it's just like he could be good but he decides not to be and they're just like how could you at the end he's just like I was just being myself that is probably my oh. favorite one of his yeah. um, I think it's just because they made him so stupid in the show like <laughs> compared to his comic book counterpart it's just like maybe that's why those episodes never like got to the same level i, I mean think, okay yeah the problem is his most famous part is an almost got him where he's like <laughs> i threw a rock at him but the thing is that's not him yeah that's, that's batman, batman <laughs> disguised as killer croc making oh, fun of right him. right yeah. right so i think that's problematic in terms of the perception of Killer Croc was just like, oh, he's an idiot. It was like, yeah, but his most famous idiotic thing wasn't even him. He is pretty yeah. intimidating See? in a Vendetta. I think that's like yeah. the first episode first, with him where he's debut. like going after Bullock. Yeah. Yeah, and he frames Bullock and pretends to be him at one point with a yeah. hat and a coat and stuff, which is like classic 80s Jerry Conway Killer mm-hmm. Croc instead of the, you know, the lizard looking guy that's in. That became uh, the norm after uh, Jim yeah. Lee did it in Hush. So, yep. What are the, uh, yeah. If I actually, I want this is my shout out uh, fan uh, interaction thing right yes. now. I. What are the best Killer Croc runs or stories or whatever? Post below, please. Yes, let us know. Yeah, yeah. would love to hear. Actually, I really would literally like to know. <laughs> I mean, I know I could Google I mean, it, but I want to ask you guys <laughs> in particular. Yes, there's like a collection of stories. They started to re-publish uh, like a new trade paperback for different villains. It's just called like Arkham, and then the character. So there's yeah, one I got yeah. it for Killer Croc, and yeah, a lot of it's always like the earliest stuff to me that's better. I didn't mm. realize DC cared enough for Killer Croc to do one for him. I'm sorry, I, well, but I didn't realize like, they do that. They did really <laughs> obscure ones. Like it was like Killer Croc. There's ta- a one about Talia Al Ghul, and I was like, was anybody asking for that? But who knows? Yeah, I guess, yeah. I like, like the, I like them all right. I, that's why I kind mm-hmm. of did the the uh, you know ask the people the listener for more stories because I I'd like yeah. to yeah know more about him. I think he's kind of he's kind of cool. I'm yeah. not saying you shouldn't care about him. I'm just yeah. saying I don't think DC cared that yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Do that yeah. for him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, well. But, yeah, this is Killer Croc. And uh, Mad Hatter pretty much looks the same. And these other sketches that we found. And then uh, Roxy Rocket. Thin Pants. I forgot about her. Where's yeah. she good? She's one ah. of those made for the continuity ah, okay. villains. Yeah. Roxy Rocket. That's cool, though. Doesn't, Did they ever make an uh, action out. figure of her? Probably, I think, yeah. I think for the um, yeah, those didn't... new collector action figures, not in the original mm-hmm. series okay. run, but it's like those mm-hmm. nicer ones. Uh, they she actually came with like her rocket and everything. Oh, cool! Yeah, yeah. So yeah, didn't quite take off like Harley Quinn did uh, at all on this, but that's fine. Uh, she's somewhat known among the you know DCAU fans, but yeah, she's exclusive mm-hmm. to this continuity. 
Uh, so after this, we just have a bunch of miscellaneous characters I can't really identify from Kevin <laughs> Nolan. People in the comments should feel free to chime in on if any of these actually made it into the show. But Heck? this one on the left says miscellaneous thug, where he's in an oversized coat with his hands in his pockets. The one on the right, this is funny, it says guy with broken arm. Now, his arms look fine, so I'm guessing <laughs> his he's going to get tight. his arm broken. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he's got the pants. tightest pants out of everybody. Tight That's and true. wrinkled. This... <laughs> How do, you get, how do you get that to work? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you pee in him several times. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like we have is. another. <laughs> yeah, we, he's peeing right now. <laughs> That's what his face is for. <laughs> he looks like the guy that kind of holds back his own racist comments all the time at a punk this show. This is this is Gary Busey's cameo. <laughs> in oh, it like is. Gary yeah. Busey. That's true. Chin's not big enough for Gary, but <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> Uh, okay, we got another miscellaneous thug in a bow tie on the left, and then this one on the right is the most notorious of them all, Guy with Chair. Oh, no. That's what it says here. Like a pro know, wrestler with, like, a leather jacket. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, it's like, it's as zippers. if, almost like, like if, as if <laughs> Lemmy from Motorhead, maybe, was mm -hmm. a pro wrestler and was using the chair to, a, a, a chair to attack people. Those boots <laughs> are just kind of very looks like. feminine. For the rest of them. <laughs> That's true. There's He's got kind it. of heels on those. Yeah. Yeah, a little point That's on the That's a good side. The heels. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm. they're uh, supposed to be we got like a random... a cowboy boots or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe that's what it's supposed to be, but you need to yeah. fill in the details there to make that clear. I, I know, yeah. We got, we got uh, <laughs> a random woman on the left. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, Zach. <laughs> I'm Let's hear it. Lady's mouth on the right. I don't know <laughs> we got a judge who I don't remember from the show. Judge yeah. Judy's uh, second cousin or something. <laughs> and we got a woman with <laughs> we got a woman with her hands on her hips on the left. Um, I don't know who this might be. It only has Kevin Nolan's uh, name on the on the right, and I can't really read what's on the left. So. Part of me was just like, maybe it's an early summer Gleason because she's got that like same type of clothes in terms of the top, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Definitely not summer Gleason on the right, though. That's These are unpleasant not That's people. A, just as judge on there, <laughs> so who knows. Um, but to really end things, we got some color versions of Bruce Timm's illustrations. Ooh. Catwoman with, once again, the, the big pointy ears. <laughs> the blue uh, black. We got Mr. Freeze. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Freeze, and then uh, this painting we're going to end on. Batman is swooping in to save a blonde woman, who I'd like to think is Kim Basinger's Vicky Vale, as the Joker is about to send her into a vat of sulfuric acid by throwing a baseball. Three balls are 75 cents. Oh, so. yeah. Okay, now nice. I get it. Yeah. 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 That's funny. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a dunk. It's a dunk pit type of thing. So, anyways, uh, what was your guys' favorite concept art? From today, <laughs> Judge Judy. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's a lot to pick from. <laughs> Can we get a another uh, like a uh, look a through? Look at Judge quick? Judy. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not at her <laughs> specifically. Her. Okay, yeah. So I'm just gonna go right from the top. I always have to going. get a, there's so much uh, all at once. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot. Yeah, give Give him a uh, recap. Yes, so we got the uh, recap. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, we're looking at the different Batman ones and the different theories uh, on that, as well as uh, the the promo art with him over the moon, the uh, Gotham City stuff. We looked at a lot that Art Deco type of feel that really helps define the animated series and makes it sort of the you know spiritual sequel successor to the Fleischer Superman in terms mm -hmm. of that style. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, just a just a ton of those. I'm just going to have to speed through all these. Hold yeah, it's cool. It's good to... So. <laughs> Demon cats. Uh, Demon cats are good. Demon cats. Get the whisker box for your crazy cat lady or gent who has a cult. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, Robin a of... with the different outfits, including the Nightwing prototype. Hey, uh, thing I'll go then. first we... since Andrew's yeah. watching. Uh, I'm too smooth-brained really, for this. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the blue-black Robin outfit. I um, mm. I've seen it before oh, yeah. from the from the Batman animated book, but it's something about it is really kind of cool to me. I like those um, those colors, and I also like seeing the original concept for uh, Ventriloquist. I had never seen that before. Oh yeah, uh, that was mm. very interesting. So those are my two favorite things. 
I got it now, by the way. It's the drawing to, for everything you shouldn't do. The censorship. The censorship I had a feeling it was going to be that one. <laughs> it's just it's just like artists are so visual, obviously, and like instead of writing rules out, <laughs> let's true. just draw the shit. Get it out of your system also. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that I think that that was um that was great. Mm-hmm. And of course, yeah. I mean any Mr. Freeze shit. Even even kind of seeing the Mr. Freeze um like uh sketches kind of like you know almost give me goosebumps y'all it's mm. just so good it's so good to know what they're about to make you know yeah that's what just the sh- on the way to and with those eyes in the darkness and all that it's just yeah it's or the too. goggles or whatever it's so good man mm-hmm. uh great. in addition to the censorship one uh i really like the the man pat the early kevin nelman yeah man, that, you know i totally get why it wasn't used but it's just it's just so freaky and creepy that you just can't help but imagine, like, what if? You know, what if you saw that in animation now? You know, you could, they could still probably do something like that now and be able to do it when they couldn't do that back in the 90s. So I think uh, um, what I mean, this can be said about the whole thing, not just not mm-hmm. just the unused stuff or whatever, but like it's just so interesting to see uh, like the animated versions of the comic book characters they had to you have to simplify it for animation reasons yeah so Mm -hmm. what gives you the most bang for your buck doing the least amount of work but not to be lazy (laughs) but they got to animate this shit over and over and over right yeah so how do you like simplify it to the best version of you know what that character is yeah Mm -hmm. the most boiled down version you could possibly get without losing anything you have to find the most important design elements and retain just that and that Mm -hmm. That even just as an experiment is interesting in and of itself, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, especially with some of the restrictions that they had, they had to keep, you know, you can't do the smoking, you can't do this or that. Um, so it's, it's kind of a, I guess it's kind of a miracle in some ways that we had the 90s superhero cartoons that we got, as we, you know, kind of talked about back when we saw the panel at the LA Comic Con with the X Men, you know, just like Fox right. had. Batman, X Men, and Spider Man. Like that was kind of the the big three for mm-hmm. superhero right. cartoons that like formed basically people's childhood perceptions of these characters. And this is kind of amazing that each one sort of hit it out of the park for their respective universe. It's rare, right, right, right. To see that all happen at once in like the same amount of time. Good. So it's great. Is the Joker left handed? Hmm. Ooh, you're right. <laughs> one at a time. Uh, yeah, Joker is left handed. You wanted me to go back, Zach. Yes. I love okay. the blue black catwoman. It that is good. It she is. looks I keep looking Pfeiffer-esque. at it, yeah. Well, I, I yeah. love like any time I re- I'm a big fan of like using blue as like a highlight for black. Oh, yeah. I don't know, something about mm-hmm. it is it gives it more dimension, but yeah, I just wanted to see mm-hmm. it again. That's good. Yeah. yeah it's really yep. good. Well, next week we're going to continue on Batman the animated series. Uh, we've discussed how Mask of the Phantasm is the greatest Batman movie, but there was actually <laughs> going to be a Batman animated series episode, an unmade BTAS episode that would dive deeper into the origin of the DCAU Batman. So next week's episode will be the unmade BTAS origin. But until then, that Bye-bye. is superhero stuff you should know. Big thanks, as usual, to our research assistant, Dan, for finding a ton of these. You're the MVP on these, as usual, because, goddamn, there was a lot. I had to, basically, <laughs> this was almost like half the amount of stuff that he found was, was in this wow. episode. I had, to, I had to cut a lot, because otherwise we would be here forever. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch that did not make it in, including these beautiful painted versions of the vehicles, like the Batmobile, <clears throat> the Batboat, the Batplane, or the Batwing, uh, the Police Blimp, of course, uh, and, you know, these great pictures we got the painted riddler from you know his debut episode mm-hmm. batman over the city and then uh you know this sort of comic cover here of all the different characters so yeah that is cool man and of course the final image of batman in the batmobile so yes that's our little nugget for you post credits so now <laughs> on to joker's fireside chat all righty <laughs> actually fitting for this episode you know because we were Indeed, looking at yes. the animated series joker oh yeah that's <laughs> true <laughs> yes and it's that time again, kids, for another Joker's Fireside Chats. All right. Oh, look, this is from little Monroeville. That's a strange name for a child, but Monroeville <laughs> writes, I'm going to call you Monroe. 
Monroe writes, Dear Uncle Joker, I'm surprised you only have 2K subscribers considering the quality of your work. Criminal, I agree. Mm. Hopefully, <laughs> the Al Gore rhythm, hey, I'll stick to the puns, thank you very much, <laughs> will be generous with you in the near future. Thank you, little Monroe. We appreciate your kind words. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I, I agree wholeheartedly yes. with this comment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Monroeville. In terms of subscribers, I'll just quote Billy D in 89 and be like, we're working on it. We need all the help you can get. <laughs> yeah. So please yeah. share us out <laughs> to your friends. Anybody who are fans of 90s Batman or the type of stuff we talk about. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. In the meantime, we'll just continue doing what we do. Next one. Oh, from Alex. All right. <laughs> and this was a comment on uh, the concept art for Batman 89. Mm -hmm. And this is from little Alex Guzman. Little Alex writes, Dear old Uncle Joker, maybe <laughs> the Batman Begins suit is similar to the 89 Under Armour because of Graham Churchyard. He started out as an assistant to Bob Ringwood, on the first Batman movie, helping in fabrication and assembly of the original Batsuit for Michael Keaton. Also, Churchyard was hired by Emma Thomas and Christopher Nolan in 2004 to supervise R&D for the Nomex Batsuit to be worn by Christian Bale. Churchyard also worked with Day Merch, the Batsuit Wrangler of all previous movies shot in Los Angeles as a consultant. <laughs> that was very informative, little Alex. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's pretty cool. Thanks for the tidbit. Yeah. That. So I thought we would yeah. share that. So that's, that's awesome. Good. We also have one more tidbit from another fan in the Fireside Chat. Ah. This one comes from Little Hebrews Toys Reviews. <laughs> also <laughs> commenting. Hebrew. Little Hebrew. <laughs> 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 Also commenting on the <laughs> anime, the, excuse me, Batman 89 <laughs> concept art. Little Hebrew writes, Dear Uncle Joker, how old are you guys? Because I saw 89 <laughs> Batman for the first time in 89, go figure on that one, at a drive-in. <laughs> I was about 13 years old and actually got the 89 Batman on VHS for Christmas. I'm guessing you guys are late 20s, early 30s. It's very nice of you. Just curious, yeah. my first Batman experience outside of the comics was 60s Batman TV series in reruns, of course. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> Thank yes. you for asking, little Hebrew. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you guys? I get asked that all the time, man. Hmm. <laughs> Yes, a lady um, never tells. We are not we are not in our late twenties, but we are in our early to mid thirties. So yes, close close to it. Yeah, we did. Uh, we grew up with this movie on VHS. We did not get the pleasure of getting to see it in the drive-in, which would have been amazing. I was I born in eighty nine, so yeah, that's uh, what's important. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, my first Bat film was Returns in the theater. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mine was Phantasm. Funny enough, I think. Oh shit! Yeah. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. and mine was yeah. Forever. Oh wow! Right That's why down it's the got line. a special place in my heart. Yep. <laughs> I see. I that was see. my first live action one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So awesome, and I think that is it for Joker's fireside chat. Oh man! On to Andrew. Gone too soon. <laughs> Gone too soon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Superhero Stuff You Should Know is a part of the HyperX Podcast Network. HyperX is our sponsor and the maker of the acclaimed Quadcast and Quadcast S microphones. Quadcast USB mics look and sound amazing, and they're packed with features. With four selectable polar patterns, you'll get great sound no matter what you're recording. The included shock mount and pop filter mean you won't have to shell out extra cash for a great setup. Then there's the eye-catching LED indicator and tap to mute sensor, so you can tap in and tap out to stop broadcast accidents. It's time for you to tap in with the HyperX Quadcast and Quadcast S. Oh man, thank you Joker and for the comments, Uncle Joker. And for mm -hmm. everybody that commented, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, we now 
are going to do the shout outs, which is include our Patreon supporters, which is uh, Shasta, Leomo, Super Inframan, Douglas P, Dandy, Aaron Willett, Nick Noir, Jeffrey R, Asgers Webb, Jeremy H, Alex of the What Mean Podcast. By the way, he sent us something and we're going to put it right here. Hey, this is Alex from the What Mean Podcast. And I guess my hot take um, is that I really like the Venom movies, specifically the second one. The first one isn't great, but um, I like just the action and how it doesn't take itself super seriously. And the visuals are great. And it's just fun movies, like, you know, with how stakes are in movies now and everything with these world ending stakes. It's fun just to have just a fun movie where the stakes are relatively low. So, um, yeah, that's a... That's basically why I like the Venom movies. That's my hot take for uh, superhero stuff you should know. Thanks, guys. We've been meaning to put this in uh, for a minute. Uh, We just kept on forgetting. Sorry, Alex, but it's in here now. And um, We got to it before Zack's Joker. They haven't, yeah. (laughs) That's true. So you should feel lucky. (laughs) No. You should um, feel, yeah, very blessed. So um, (laughs) I got to say I agree with your statement about Venom 2. I don't think these guys have seen it. It's better than Venom One. It is as dumb as it as it is amazing. <laughs> it's so good. It's got Batman Forever energy. Mm. Uh, I really have to say, and I'm sure um, a lot of our fans probably feel that way. Uh, so yeah, um, thanks for sending them that uh, voice uh, bumper there. Awesome man. So that's Alex of the What Mean Podcast with that. Mm-hmm. And uh, continuing on, Ian Justice, Jared P, Jamie H, Rochelle L, Matthew B, Skyler, T D, Sketchcraft, Braxton W, Renee V, J D, and Logan Wood, who is Shane Helms one two one, on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And our other supporters: Spark Again, SECT Productions, Robert Schumann, Kooky Nuns, Matt Herring, Elijah B, Shamrock Balls, Ian H, Walter the Robot, John Wells, Rye Guy, Jackson Putnam, Tway N. And Watson, who's Stage Bat on Instagram. And Joey. Who I've is, added Joey, yes. Uh, we added Joey, who is uh, mm-hmm. at, or is W.media on Instagram, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. he also does art that's somewhat inspired by our show. Uh, so oh, he nice. He recently did a Brendan Fraser Superman after our uh, fan cast of him in Batman vs. Superman, the 2002 version. So I thought I would throw him in there since he's been a good supporter of, our, of ours. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you for that, man. That's great. Uh, and then, so, uh, the Shasta Army is our $1 tier on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash superhero stuff pod. And the $1 tier gets you the shout out. The $5 tier gets the shout out plus a whole new show every Friday. You can cancel anytime. Uh, we also have a $10 tier, which has the $1 and $5 tier benefits plus you can be part of the monthly meetup, and uh, we have a good old time chuckling with each other <laughs> all together with fans uh, on there. And uh, yeah, that's uh, where we meet up once a mo- once a month, just like the name says. Mm-hmm. Uh, then, all right. So Zach, <laughs> so the merch. <laughs> There's been some forward movement on this. <laughs> I've I've asked Stefan for new art. <laughs> to submit of course he's taking forever but i've tried okay so we're getting we're, we're <laughs> what <laughs> amazing what do you he's mean not watching art. he's already done it what, what are we waiting on no he's gonna well, redo it so they accept it yeah because oh, they don't like it for the color reasons. change to the hair the color change yeah, honestly yeah, he yeah. just just change the hair that's it he doesn't need to do the whole thing yeah but Whatever. I just didn't want to change artist. his art without asking him so that's sure. a very sure. good thing of you to do andrew Thank you, man. Most I try sometimes. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we'll hopefully get that at some point. But anyway, get your Ben Man and Indeed Wizard merch, and that's it at <laughs> superhousepod.redbubble.com and superheroestuffpod.threadless.com. I will talk to Stefan again. Anyway, the artwork is by Stefan. <laughs> well, someday we won't have this joke because we'll actually have it in there. But anyway, the runaway <laughs> gag continues to run away. Uh, yes. So, send, like like Alex did, uh, uh, please send us some audio to superhero uh, superhousepodcast at gmail.com. It can be anything. It could be an opinion. It could be you guys are awesome, you guys suck, whatever. Uh, <laughs> we'll play anything at this point. 
uh, and yeah, it can just be just recorded on your phone and doesn't have just to be anything too crazy. Blow or it can be a really awesome voice as well. Yeah, blow, yeah, a, blow a raspberry, raspberry rasp- into the recorder. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I'm Thunderwolf Drew on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Thunderwolf Lives on YouTube. I'm Thunderwolf Thunderwolfdrew.com is my portfolio website. Take a take that for a spin. Um, amanorecon.com it's A-M-A-N-O-R-E-C-O-N dot com it's an original um, Japanese like tokusatsu which means special effects it's like uh, think Power Rangers meets uh, X-Files but it's R-rated and bloody kind of Ash vs. the Evil Dead kind of thing um, but it's uh, it's not a fan film but it will be an original thing and it's going to be an Indiegogo campaign. I've been talking about it forever, but we have filmed something. We just got to film a little bit more, and we'll have a vid- that. What we're filming is the campaign video to go at the top of the Indiegogo page, and uh, yeah, that's coming at some point. Wonderful poster art by Zach Octavius. Ben, mm-hmm. so you can check us out on Twitter at Superhouse Pod, Instagram <clears throat> at Superhero Stuff Pod, TikTok at Superhero Stuff Pod, Vero Superhero Stuff Pod. Shout out to Comic Capital on Instagram for being a supporter, as well as the Everything Entertainment Club on Clubhouse. These days, they're talking about the Book of Boba Fett, which I have not seen, so that's probably why I have not been there for a while. But Man, I'm so f- when so I do behind. end up watching it, or if they talk about something I have seen, then I will probably be there. And that's how I met with Rob Ailing. So you could talk, probably talk to both Rob and me whenever both of us return to those rooms. Whenever there's anyway. some Batman shit in there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Some the real stuff. Something worth talking about. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's Batman time. Forget about this Boba Fett shit. <laughs> so, uh, my website is benwanrider.com where you can read a couple fan scripts of mine. The Gotham Vampire where young Bruce Wayne faces off against the Golden Age villain The Mad Monk as well as my spec script for Elementary The Death of Sherlock Holmes a modern update on the classic story The Adventure of the Dying Detective. My YouTube channel is in the description below where you can check out my project Doctor Who, The Ronin of Time, an audio drama I write, narrate, and edit where the Eighth Doctor meets Miyamoto Musashi in ancient Japan. My personal Instagram mm-hmm. is Ben Juan Ryder. My son's Instagram, yes, my cat, Alfie Pennyworth, is at <laughs> Alfie Pennyworth Cat. His full name, of course, is Alfred Thaddeus Crane Pennyworth, <laughs> just like his Good comic Lord. book counterpart. <laughs> Alfred Thaddeus Crane Pennyworth. That does not include his nickname. So anyway, if you also have an Alfie or you have a cult of the cat, just like the people in the previous uh, part of this episode, you can get the whisker box for your cat cult <laughs> statues or your real cat, whichever one you have. The only cat box, the crazy cat lady and gent. And if you don't have a cat, but you have a dog instead and you have a cult for your dog, then... Or if you, you also the have box. a dog, get just yes. both of them. Just fucking... <laughs> come on. What are you guys doing with your pets? Come on. Yes. Didn't get them the bark box, y'all. You can get... <laughs> This promo link that'll get the first month off free, valued at $35. You can get that at SuperheroStuffPod.com slash shop, where you can also get a link to the Amazon page where you can buy the Batman Definitive History of the Dark Knight book by Andrew Farrago and Gina McIntyre that we always sort of include a lot of different concept art for, and it's huge, it's humongous, it will kill your circulation when you're reading it while you're <laughs> walk, you know, sitting on the toilet, taking a shit, but it's worth it, and you guys can have that for yourselves. And, it's, worth, uh, <laughs> it's worth the loss of circulation, trust me. You won't even need your toes. There's <laughs> so much good Batman shit. So, yeah, and a little bit will kick back to us. So, yeah, check that out, as well as some of the other stuff we have on there at that link. And, uh, <laughs> That is it. Over to Zach. <laughs> oh, you know the drill. I'm going to say it. You're probably not going to go to it, but you can. <laughs> I'm going to say it. You're not going to listen. Take this website for a spin. <laughs> ZacharyJacksonBrownArt.com, where you can see more of my artwork. You can even buy things, which is great. Mm. Got some Joker t shirts up there if you're interested. Uh, and uh, you can also follow me on the Instagrams and the TikToks and the YouTubes. It's all the same name. You just look up Zachary Jackson Brown Art. And that's it. Nice. Nice. And you know, I want you to do us a favor. I want you to tell all your friends about us. And is he on the police payroll? And if so, what's he pulling down? <laughs> After taxes. After taxes. <laughs> <laughs>